From the heart of the South, the finale of ABC's championship Saturday, matching two of the top quarterbacks in the country, their first SEC title game. I want to beat Auburn. I want to win a, I want to win a championship and get an SEC ring. Peyton Manning, Tennessee's classy quarterback. When you watch him, you can hear the violin. I laid it on the line, I play hurt, and I'm off the field, I've mentally got prepared. I take film home every day, and I put so much into this, into this team um, for this one game. Auburn's Damian Craig, the whirling dervish, the unpredictable wisp, the saber dance. It's a cold, glittering night in Atlanta, and the first time in the SEC title game, there are no Gators in the Georgia Dome. The moat has been forged by plainsmen and volunteers. The carriages have been arriving for two days. The ringing sound from Rocky Top and the defiant battle cry of War Damn Eagle echo across the city. There's a whole lot of orange in the Georgia Dome for the sixth SEC championship game. Presented by Dr. Pepper. There may be greater prizes in the offing for these two teams, Auburn and Tennessee, but it matters little, it seems, to the players. Because since we've seen them here in Atlanta, they've talked of nothing but this championship game and the ring that goes with it. This is Auburn's only chance for a championship. Tennessee must win tonight to have any bigger hope. Let's turn to Bob Greasy now as the thunder starts to collect here in the Georgia Dome, the teams coming into the stadium, and talk about what seems to me to be a showcase for quarterbacks. Uh, exactly, Keith. Two different styles. Uh, Damian Craig uh, is a great athlete, a fierce competitor, but he's a one-man gang. They have no running game. He is 80% of the offense throwing and running the ball he himself. All the pressure is on Damian. He has to have a great game for them to have a chance. On the other side, Peyton Manning. I think Peyton Manning is the best quarterback to come out of college in the last 15 years. He has some help, a running back by the name of Jamal Lewis. They have a running game. They have balance. But I can assure you one thing. If you're talking trophies, the only trophy that's on Peyton Ma Manning's mind tonight is the Southeastern Conference Championship Trophy. The Volunteers are 10 and 1. They are ranked third in the polls. The Auburn Tigers are 9 and 2 and fighting. You know, I liken this football game to a to a fight, a football fight for first place. Now, both teams lead with the pass, but Tennessee has a good one-two pass-run combination. What Terry Bowden of Auburn understands is his team lacks that second punch, the run. They found Jamal Lewis. They became a complete offense. We've not become that complete offense. One game, maybe, against Georgia, a complete offense. But overall, we go into this game a little bit limping offensively. And what they have to do so they don't limp too much is find a couple of good crutches. That is, somehow find a running attack and somehow get the wide receivers to make the big play for them on the offensive side, Keith. All right, Lynch one, thank you. Terry Bowden, fifth season for the Auburn Tigers as head coach, 45-11-1. His first meeting, however, against Tennessee. They've not played since 91. Philip Fulmer, sixth year, his record 53-10 with the Tennessee Volunteers. And his first chance at claiming an SEC championship. The deep people to receive as Tennessee won the toss and wants the football. Uh, Auburn will kick it off. Tennessee wants the ball. The deep people are Wilson, Cedric Wilson, 14, and Brian Darden, number three. And the ball's in the air and gone. From Holmes, way back into the end zone. There will be no return. It'll be Tennessee ball. First down at the 20 yard line. So as Peyton Manning, who's become a folk hero in the state of Tennessee, comes out, there are his numbers on the season. the ball game the Tennessee Volunteers let's see if Manning gives it to Lewis to run it nope he sends him in motion he's out there as a receiver they'll throw to him he comes back to get it on the screen and he pops out of the open 
and it's a big play to start the ball game for Tennessee. Goes out of bounds at the 45-yard line. The Dr. Pepper starting lineup for the Tennessee Volunteers along the front. Uh, right tackle is a 320-pound freshman, Cozy Coleman. You'll want to watch him. The receivers, number two, Marcus Nash, the most dangerous. They do things after they catch the ball. The backfield, the world knows about Peyton Manning. You'll meet Jamal Lewis if you haven't seen him already, and uh, you'll get to know him over the seasons to come. He's a dandy. So it's first down for the Volunteers, and Jason Bray is in the ball game, number four at a wide out position. Manning pitches to Lewis, and he comes to the right side on a sweep. He is knocked down as he comes around the corner by uh, Jason Bray, a corner coming up to hit him at the knees. The defensive front for Auburn, Dorsey in the middle, needs to generate some pressure tonight. The linebackers, senior Rick and Neal has 113 tackles. He's going to play hard along with Spikes. The DBs, there's youth. I mean, there's sophomores and juniors and a true freshman in the defensive secondary. And against Peyton Manning, that equals trouble. Big trouble. <laughs> Second down. And about six as the play goes over the right side with Jamal Lewis, who is a 220-pound freshman from out of the city of Atlanta. And he moves the ball to the Auburn 47-yard line where Ricky Neal made the tackle. So look at Jamal Lewis. Uh, he's averaging over 100 yards per game. That's third in the uh, Southeastern Conference. He is the number one true freshman running back in the country. He rushed over 1,200 yards this year, Keith. And as we mentioned, once they found him in the fourth game, their offense was balanced. It is third and two, the ball at the Auburn 47. Tigers right now show a four-man front. Tennessee will throw. Manning hitched it once, throws it, fumbles it, ball rolls around, a fight for it, goes to Tennessee. Marcus Nash caught it, coughed it up. Sean Bryson covered it, coming out of the backfield, the fullback. Well, it helps to be lucky, Keith. Obviously, uh, Tennessee is good with their quarterback and their wide receivers, but this was a fortunate break to get this ball back. Dumps it off to Nash, who's running a crossing route. Takeo Spikes knocks it loose. Tennessee gets it back. And it's first down, Volunteers, Auburn 40-yard line. Manning, back to throw. Going big to the corner. It is touchdown, Tennessee. Here it is. beat on the play as Price just went up and took the ball away and went into the corner. The extra point try now from Jeff Hall. The snapper is Kevin Gregory. The holder is Benson Scott. And the kick is good. And before you can take a deep breath, the Volunteers have jumped to a 7-0 lead. A 40-yard touchdown pass. Manning to Price. Advantage here, Peyton Manning gets one more chance in what amounts to the postseason to make a statement about the coveted Heisman Trophy, which uh, I'm sure there are still some votes outstanding because the deadline is not until the 11th. So it ain't a bad beginning. Danny Werfel kind of made a statement last year in this ball game, threw Absolutely. for threw for over 400 yards and six touchdowns. He did. At the seven-yard line, Marquise Cooper. He hesitated. That's deadly. He's down at the 20. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. Here's an isolate peerless price. Man is covered. He's right there with him. Good call on first down. David Cutcliffe. The ball is thrown well. There was good coverage. You just got to give a good uh, good play to Peyton Manning putting the ball right on the mark. Ray had gotten the start at corner over the uh, freshman Eric Collier. Uh, cashier, I'm sorry, and uh, Ray makes the 
did about all he could do, I guess. It, he was there. He was right there. Yep. Just missed the ball when he tried to hit it. Damian Craig will throw on first down, and he's going big down the middle of the field, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Karsten Bailey. The Dr. Pepper starting lineup for the Auburn Tigers across the offensive front. Only one senior. That would be tackle Victor Riley. 33 starts in his career successively. Receivers, these are the people who have to make plays tonight if the Tigers are to have a chance. As Bob mentioned, Auburn has no running to speak of. Damian Craig's the one-man gang back there. And those wide receivers have got to help him. Second down and ten. They try to run and lose two. Fred Beasley, the fullback, is hit about the time the ball got there by uh, Raynock Thompson. The Tennessee defensive front, and this is a very active group. They'll part your hair for you. <laughs> the linebackers, if Al Wilson's sore ankle holds up on the rug, uh, that'll help them a lot in getting uh, that big guy Little over to the middle linebacker and defensive end position. Yeah, that's where they want him. Cornerbacks are seniors, uh, fair in games, and they're very good. But uh, you want to watch where number one is. And if you're playing for Auburn, you better know where he is. Craig now flush. This is when he's dangerous. It's caught. And it is a big one for a hit four. Out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Corey Gaines ran him down. Don't ever give up on Damian Craig because he doesn't. Well, this, this is where he is so dangerous, Keith. The coverage was there. There was pretty good pressure in the pocket, and Damien just took off. He's got pretty good coverage, pretty good protection, and the coverage is there. Now he's creating. Hicks Core just takes off downfield. Doesn't see the ball coming. That's number nine is Noel. The first big play for Auburn. 69 yards, and it's first down at the 13-yard line for the Tigers. And Craig. Hands it to his tailback, Rusty Williams. And Rusty has all of the rust knocked off on his first carry. He stopped right about the line of scrimmage. So Auburn Keith has just not been able to do anything on the ground running the football. Take a look at this. They're 16th in passing in the nation, but they're 109th rushing. They average only 82 yards per game on the ground. That's there's only 112 teams in the NCAA. They can see the bottom from there. Second down, 11. Craig out of the shotgun. Little's coming. Craig takes off, gets his ball away, and it is incomplete. And he is knocked down. Corey Gaines fought his way through the traffic and got him. That time, Leonard Little had moved over to a defensive end position. Yeah, the referee, Al Ford, kind of uh, gave uh, Terry Bowden and his uh, Tigers the benefit of the doubt there. That could have been called intentional grounding, but was It is third and 11. Got three wide outs. Craig deep. Snaps a little off the target. Passes away, and it is incomplete. Tyrone Dillard may well have been the intended receiver and was knocked down as he was working his way downfield, and Damien has spoken about it. Well, it's going to come from the left side of your screen. Right there in the middle, right there. Yep. Little, number one, knocks the receiver off. If the ball's in the air, you cannot hit a receiver. It looked like that ball was in the air. So it's Garrett Holmes who had that terribly dramatic field goal to win against Alabama. This is big here, Keith. Just get on the board. 30-yard try. Big leg here. And it's good. He has kicked 11 consecutive field goals. It's seven to three, Tennessee.
The Auburn Tigers on a cold, clear night in the house, thank goodness, because they're talking about it going down to the middle 20s tonight around oh, the city oh, oh. of Atlanta. But it's clear. Here's the kickoff by Jared Holmes. It bounces at the six and goes beyond the field of play. Now, let's spend a moment with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, you know, it's very interesting when you have a scrambling quarterback like Damian Craig for the wide receiver. You basically go out every time thinking about running two patterns. One, the pattern that's called. The second pattern comes into play when he begins to scramble. And as a receiver, you have to know where the open area is, where to come back to your quarterback. And in most cases, you always want to come back to the quarterback. But in that case, where they had the big play, the receiver was smart because he knew he had the open foot behind him and the quarterback who could get it to him. Keith? Thank you, Swanee. Never give up, like I said, because uh, Craig doesn't understand that word. Peyton Manning sets the volunteers in motion with a quick pop pass thrown to Fearless Price. And Price paid it that time as he took a wallop from Rob Payton. Peyton Manning has three receivers that have caught over 40 or 40 passes or more coming into the season. If you jump down to the bottom line, you'll see the touchdown passes. Reception 67 for Nash, Copeland with 54, and Price, who caught the touchdown earlier, comes in with 40. Just inside the 10-minute mark of the first quarter, it's 7 to 3. Tennessee volunteers with the ball, second down and six at their own 24. And penalty flags and a whistle. And they burn the clock. Pull the ball will snap, movement by the offensive nope. line, five yards. And move too there. soon. It's very difficult here when you have this much enthusiasm modeled up in under the roof. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is loud. Oh, it's loud, and the players are all hyped up. They've been looking forward to this. Uh, I mean, this is the first time Auburn and Tennessee has been in this extravaganza. It's always been Florida representing one side, and then Alabama and Arkansas once for the other. Now Peyton's calling his play at the line of scrimmage. On second down, 11. Everybody's up there, all 11 at the line of scrimmage. And they get Corbin knocked the ball over. And Tennessee's got it back. So that's twice the volunteers have had the ball come loose. And each time they've been able to cover it. Well, this here, time it was Riley. What you were talking about, he checked off the 31. What's 31? He thought it was a running play. Peyton had checked off because he saw all 11 at the line of scrimmage. He was going to throw a pass to the wide receiver, but because of the noise, the tailback, Jamal Lewis, didn't hear him and didn't get the snap gap and ran into him. And about the time big old Leonardo Carson arrived and the ball came out, but the volunteers remain lucky here in the first quarter. They lead by 7-3. to three. The ball is now back at the 11-yard line. Pressure coming. Manning's pass is incomplete. And Manning is taken down. Pass intended for Copeland, but it was Jason Gray who came in on a blistering blitz. Well, one of the things they want to do, only have a three-man line here. Peyton's thinking about that, but the corner comes off the edge on the short side of the field. Watch Bray. He gets there just in, just in the nick of time to force him to throw an incompletion. Chris Hogue is in the punt, averaging just under 40. Very consistent punter. It's a low line drive. It runs Marquise Cooper back to the 32, looking for some daylight. That's too much hesitation. You can't be toe dancing around back there. They'll give you a tutu. You got to put your head down and go north and south. Go the volunteers eat him up. <laughs> Tennessee leading seven to three. Auburn's ball at their own 40-yard line. Prime time. Here on ABC, Monday, Hugh Downs will take you on an incredible journey into the, the tombs of the pharaohs and their amazing secret and all new tales from the tomb Monday. And live at 9 Eastern on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the Carolina Panthers and the Dallas Cowboys. Both teams are at 6 and 7, so it's a big game for both of those teams. Still got a chance to get in. First down, and Tennessee turns it loose. Craig runs away from it, throws hard pass can't be handled by Hicks poor that ball was a Hummer yeah, and you, old Damien's looking at Hicks yeah, saying, you got that you got to make right. those you got you got to hit that Keith you're right he's outside the pocket here's a look at 
Damian's numbers on the season, but when you're outside the pocket like that and you got a man bump and run, one on one, the receiver turns around, you've got to hit that one. So it's second down and 10. It's the wideouts for Auburn that will make the difference in this ballgame. If they don't come up with a better effort than they had against Alabama, I don't believe they can handle it. Damian gave, uh, gave him some heck early in the season. He'll, he'll he yell at Behind the line of scrimmage, Fred Beasley is walloped by Darwin Walker. Linebacker walked right through the hole, and Beasley never had a chance. Neither team, Keith, has a dominant defense. Tennessee's defense in the nation is ranked uh, 39th overall, so they're not in the top 25, but they're, they're solid defense, but not dominant. And there is the leader of the volunteer defense right there, Leonard Little. Third down and 15 now for the Tigers. Craig gives the ball away. To Rusty Williams and Williams will get up to about the 42 and stop there and the Tigers will have to fight well the last time brother Bill Oliver was able to get some defensive pressure on Peyton Benning see what he can do this time Dropping back to accept the punt is Terry Fair, number 13. He's a defensive back. And it's Jared Holmes who does all the kicking for Auburn. And it's a good punt. Back to the 12. There's a veteran. And comes up to the 20. And there's a penalty flag thrown from the official on the far side. Jared Holmes' punting average is at 43 yards per roughly. Al Ford. During the return, the block in the back on the white team. 10 yard penalty, first down 10. So that moves him back, and let me set the rest of the officials for you. Bud Williams, the umpire. Billy Shore, the linesman. Paul Patrisco, the line judge. Side judge is Ben Oldham. Field judge is Stanley Dixon. The back judge is Ned Wilford. First uh, series, Peyton looked at across the line and saw a normal defense. The second time, he saw a nickel package on first down, Keith. Brother Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator, going to change it up on him. It's at the 11, and it is first and 10. Peyton changing his play. It's dangerous when a place like this. You can't hear. This is Jamal Lewis. Lewis is anchored down first off by Ricky Neal. Here's Bill Oliver, one of the fine defensive coordinators in this country, Keith. He was at Alabama for a while. In fact, he is the only guy that's ever been in this championship game. He was here with Alabama, but the game within a game. Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator, and David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator for Tennessee. Cutcliffe on the first drive, that long pass for the touchdown on first down after the ball was fumbled. Be a great battle within a game between those two guys. And Peyton Manning calling the controls at the controls. Pretty good. Second down and eight. Ball is thrown to the outside to Nash. Ball is on the ground. Lewis picked up by Auburn. Touchdown. Brad Ware. This time, Tennessee fumbled it and didn't get it back. And the Tigers put it in the end zone. And the freshman knocked it loose, Larry Catcher. Pass was completed to Nash. Nash was hit, and the ball came out. And Jared Holmes now for the point. It's good. to play in the first quarter. The Auburn Tigers take the lead 10-7 over Tennessee. Beyond the field of play, it'll come back to the 20-yard line.
like so many times over the years of Southeastern Conference football you seldom go down on a single hit you'll get two Casher on the bottom and spikes on the top but to Keo spikes that's the second fumble he's caused here tonight and Terry Bowden telling us yesterday that he's going to need some help he's going to need some help from Tennessee turning the ball coughing it up he's gotten it for a touchdown the other way here in the first uh, half of the first quarter Five and a half minutes to go in the first period. From the 20, Manning calling his play. Jamal Lewis. And Lewis gets across the 25, out to the 28. Well, Keith, coming in this ball game, I talked to Brother Bill Oliver just on the sideline beforehand, and he's very realistic about this defense. He understood, after watching Vandy, how important it was that Auburn's defense take Peyton Manning out of his rhythm and also make some big plays. This defense come into, came into tonight's ball game having scored three touchdowns prior to the one they just scored on the defensive side. That's the kind of effort he was hoping for, Keith. Well, so far, so good. Lewis goes in motion from the beat back spot, handed to the up hand, pull back Sean Bryson, and the Tigers eat him up on second down and the long two. He didn't get anything. Takeo Spikes very active in the middle. Spikes leads his team in tackles. He had a 65-yard interception return for a touchdown earlier. He is their, their marquee player, Keith. He has been outstanding for a number of years, and he's just a junior. Third and two. But they've he set the tone. He is aggressive on defense. They've got the ball to come out. They, they smell the blood. Now they can taste it. The pass is good for the first down to Derek Edmonds who had come in at the fullback position and slipped out there and Edwards caught it right between the threes in front of the freshman quarterback Cashew. I think the message that Auburn defensively is sending is you may have the stars you may have the, the talent the wide receiver the skill position and the quarterback but we're going to get after you, and when you catch it, we're going to hit you. Auburn has taken the timeout, and the time remaining in the first quarter of play, three minutes, 49 seconds, and Auburn leads by three. Ten to seven, Auburn leading Tennessee in the first quarter of play. Timeout called by the Auburn Tigers. Tomorrow night on ABC, Wonderful World of Disney presents the network premiere of the classic Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling, and then a National Geographic movie event, Aidan Quinn starring in Forbidden Territory, Stanley's Search for Livingston. ABC tomorrow night. Ball just short of the 33-yard line. First down for the bottom team. Guys at the line of scrimmage again, and he's obviously he's checking, checking it out. Puts air under it for Price, and it is incomplete. And that's a good job by Bray. Price beat him for the touchdown, and since then, Bray's had a solid lick on Manning and has been right in Price's pocket. Well, everybody's up at the line of scrimmage. Peyton sees it. A single coverage on the outside says, we'll, we'll take a shot at it. My wide receiver against your defensive back. Terry Bowden telling us yesterday it was his, one of his concerns was, can his corners hold up against Tennessee's wide receivers? Got that same matchup down here at the bottom of the picture. Same look, 11 at the line. Pressure coming, and they force Manning to unload it. Crowd on the Auburn side hooting uh, for a grounding call as Spikes came tiring through. Well, they're, they're all lined up there again. All 11 are here. And here is Spikes right in the center guard gap. Now, somebody's responsible for him. Either one of the guard or the center is, or the back. If, the back. if it's the back, he needs to step up around before the ball snap because he's never going to get there before the linebacker gets there. Brother Bill doing a nice job mixing things up early in the game. It is third and ten from the 33. 
Same look. All 11 at the line. Puts air under it for Price. Against Bray. Can't make the catch. This time, Bray won. So, Price got his hands on it. Well, you do that enough. 11 guys at the line of scrimmage. You're going to win some like Spikes didn't play before. And you're going to lose some with these wide receivers. Price and Bray right there. Nice job defensively. And it's fourth down, and in comes Chris Hogue. His first punt was 51 yards. Markeith Cooper waiting for it. Bad kick. Off the side of the foot, bounds up into the air, and the Volunteers will down it at the 44-yard line of Auburn. A 24-yard punt. Tonight's aerial shots being provided by the Bud One airship, which reminds you that fresh beer tastes better. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I hope they got their jackets on out there because it was cold. From the 44, Tennessee shows some blitz here. They knock a little down. There's the pass completed out of the backfield to Fred Beasley. You, you think when you get a quarterback running around, you've taken away some of his accuracy, but that's not the case well, with Craig. That's exactly right. And they're moving him. See how they, it's a semi roll. They roll, roll him halfway. Rodney Allison, the offensive coordinator, was telling me that. That, that Damien is very accurate against teams that just drop back in zones from the uh, pocket. But they like to move him right and left against teams that like the blitz. Second and one. They try the run and get the first down with Rusty Williams carrying. Rusty is a sophomore from Monk's Corner, South Carolina. The man behind him, Demontre Carter, is a freshman, true freshman from Pensacola. But there's not a whole lot of depth in the running back position and certainly not much experience and not a lot of production Keith none of the backs have over 275 yards uh, we've played 11 games Demarcus Curry is out of the lineup on the offensive front at guard TJ Mears moves over to the right side and Kendall Simmons comes in at the left guard position all show blitz Craig fakes the pitch sets up and throws a hunter Number 41, Dillard is the tight end. They don't throw very often to their tight ends. In fact, Dillard came in with only three receptions. Here he is right here. He's just going to go up. Fake is going to be this way, and he's going to roll a little bit to our right. Top right of your screen, he just drills that ball right between two defenders. And it's first down Auburn at the Tennessee 31-yard line. You're going to throw that ball to the tight ends a little bit now so they'll block for you. That's right. I <laughs> know yeah, you love them. <laughs> Rusty Williams in there for maybe a yard, no more. Corey Terry, number 22, a defensive end, got him. It'll be second down, and it's still pretty close to 10 yards. Number 83, Tyrone Goodson, has come wide at the bottom of the picture. And here comes the blitz. And the pass is away for Goodson, and it's too high. Defended on the play by Terry Fair. Terry Bowden yesterday. I asked him to describe his quarterback, define him for us, and this is what the coach said about Damian Craig. He makes them compete. Uh, he wants to win. He's always wanted to win. He was a state champion in high school, and those are the kind of guys that you want. So if there's a defining element of his personality, I can't say it's calmness, but it's competitiveness. Yeah, you can just feel it when you're around it. Third down and ten. Hicks Poor is back in there. Tennessee now with six up front. Craig's pass is away down the middle. It's thrown incomplete. Eric Lowe got his hands on it. He had crossing people in the middle. 
And it was Dwayne Goodrich who came over and knocked the ball loose. But number five, Karsten Bailey, had crossed right in front of him. Yeah, he had a man. The, he's going to come from the right side. The receiver comes from the right side, but a, a defensive back is going to knock it down from the left side. This is not uh, good offensive game planning when you have two receivers in the same area bringing defensive backs in that area. Could have, been, could have been a touchdown, Keith. Could have, yeah. They were set up for a field goal try for Jared Holmes. It will be a 48-yarder. He is four out of six between 40 and 49, so he's got plenty of leg on this, and apparently he has ice in his veins. You he's see, a tough guy. Well, you see Damian there. He's not happy because he knew that he had a touchdown, and the other receiver should not have been bringing the defensive back into that area. He's upset. Well, Bob, you know, it might be one of those plays that you're supposed to run at midfield, and then the receivers have to make an adjustment as you get down to the end of the end zone because the field gets compressed. Maybe the deep guy can't run down the middle and clear out. He's supposed to take it to the corner. There are just certain plays you can't not you cannot run once you get close to the end zone. That may have been one of them, Bob. Good point. And why call it? <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> I was waiting for the, the punctuation on that. Well, I, was, I just, I just, I had to say that. I just had to get it out. All right, here we go with this 48-yard field goal try. It's plenty of leg. Will it hold in? Yes. So Jared Holmes proves what his coach said yesterday. He may be our MVP even though he's on the same team with Damian Craig. It's now 13 to seven, the Auburn Tigers have the lead. The Iron Bowl, everybody knows about that, the annual between Alabama and uh, the Auburn Tigers, and it was Jared Holmes after a small miracle gave them the ball back on this play. Kitchens pass to Sism. Sism is double teamed and hit. The ball pops out. Auburn recovers it, and Holmes comes in and kicks a 39-yard field goal for an 18 to 17 win. It was interesting yesterday what Terry was saying, uh, Keith. He said Tennessee had Manning, and they got Jamal Lewis, and that was their spark, and that was their their uh, guy that really came in and beside their quarterback. Well, he said we have Craig, but we didn't get a running back to come in and help us. But Jared Holmes, the kicker, has done for us what Jamal Lewis has done for Tennessee. He is a senior from Clinton, Mississippi. That's the bad news. He's a senior. But probably good news for some team on Sunday. Here's the kickoff. A lot of air under this one, and it's going deep. We are at a minute and 20 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. And you're surprised, are you? Auburn 13, Tennessee 7. Well, I think what you've got here, Keith, is a huge confidence swing to the uh, Auburn side and a little poise check here. Uh, Tennessee's got to keep their poise now. You know, they're a little bit behind. They got jumped on. They had a fumble return for a touchdown against them. Time to just settle down and play. Keep your confidence and your poise. Bryson's the man in motion. Throw the ball out there to it. Nope. Number 12, Marcus Nash. And uh, they know about Nash. I mean, the minute that ball looks like it's going toward him, every Tiger in the neighborhood jumps in. Keith, Bob, I don't know what happened out there, but for a moment there, Peyton Manning tried to check out of the play. He didn't want it. He had a man in motion with his back to him who was not going to hear it, but he definitely wanted to check out of that play, Keith. Lost a yard, second down, 11. <laughs> Pass thrown down the middle, and it is short hopped in complete. Andy McCullough was the intended receiver. Should have been caught. The ball was uh, very catchable. But uh, Auburn has gone back to their nickel. That's five defensive backs. It's just a little bit different style. 
The ball could have been caught, should have been caught. But Brother Bill Oliver, the coordinator, playing with Peyton's mind, said, all right, second time I gave you a lot of defensive backs, now I'm going back to that. But not every time I'm going to do that to you. Henning going again for Fearless Price. Bray covering on the play, and it is incomplete. So the water in that well may be getting a little thin. Chris Hogue comes out to punt for Tennessee now, and it'll be his third to punt of the ball game. His last one was only 24. He shanked it. Got this one. That'll have frost on it when it comes down. Fair catch is called. It'll be Auburn ball. Just inside their 40-yard line. 42-yard punt and no return. A little frustration on the sideline. Uh, I'm sure that that uh, Phil Fulmer is telling Peyton and David Cutcliffe is telling just uh, settle down. They're, you know, they're giving us some different looks. That time they had all 11 at the line of scrimmage, but they pulled out and dropped back into a zone. A lot of different looks, but that's what you're going to get when you go up against good teams. DeMontre Carter, the freshman, is in a tailback for Auburn. Playing in high school a year ago. Damian Craig gives it to him. He's quick. And he gets out to about the 42 yard line before Tory Noel brings him down. He missed his hole. If he'd planted and cut back yeah, to his right, there was plenty of room. Exactly right, Keith. He's just a little excited. He's a little quick. He'll settle down and be a good running back, but he's fumbled the ball a few times. That's why they don't play him a lot, but he was a legitimate high school All-American. After the first quarter of play, 13-7, Auburn over Tennessee, and we'll return after this message and the words from our ABC station. This has been the toughest ticket in the history, I think, of the SEC championship. Commissioner Roy Kramer looking terribly pleased tonight with a total sellout, and everybody standing, a lot of folks standing outside wondering if all the seats were occupied. And I think the message is yes. 71,000 and something. We'll get the attendance later. Here's Damian Craig back to pass on second down. He throws the bullet. The pass is caught by Carson Bailey. And Bailey is very close to his first down near midfield, albeit the 49-yard line. All right, we've played one quarter. Let's take a look at the numbers for the quarterbacks. Uh, Manning, 7 of 13, 90 yards and a touchdown. 3 of 9 for Damien, uh, 91 yards. He hit that one big one for, I don't know what it was, 67 yards or something like that. 69. 69. But I'll bet by the end of the night, Damien has more rushing yards than Peyton. <laughs> <laughs> he got the first down. And Peyton would probably say, that's just fine with me. Karsten Bailey made that catch, and I tell you, it was like catching a hot rock because he had, uh, Craig had drilled it. Bailey, a uh, junior from Sharpsburg, Georgia. Bill Fulmer has been very successful succeeding Johnny Majors at Tennessee. Rusty Williams is the deep back now for Auburn, number three. First down at the 49. Craig still got it, pressure coming, steps away, gets his pass off, going deep down the middle, it is caught, touchdown, Tyrone Goodson. a 50-yard pass play. And Goodson beat Terry Fair on the play, but what a throw by Craig. Kick by Holmes is good. Auburn has scored 20 unanswered points. Keith, the amazing thing about this is Damien doesn't set his feet. He throws his ball running forward. Doesn't 
Davis at his feet. That's an outstanding throw and a nice catch by Goodson. The safety should have been there, the free safety, but with the play action pass and took so long to throw it, Damian just threw it deep down the middle and good things are happening for the Tigers. The ball was released, Bob, just as defensive end Corey Terry, number 22, got his hands on it. It was that close. You know, Keith? Yes, Swanee, go ahead. You know, Keith, Damian Craig challenged certain members on this football team. He's talking about his wide receiver, specifically Tyrone Goodson, about accepting the challenge and giving everything you have for this game. I think the entire offense accepted that challenge. People kept talking about how the offense wasn't scoring enough points, how it was a defense that was going to have to do things for this football team. This offense has changed its tune for the championship game, Keith. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> so far, you're certainly right. This is Holmes. All four of his kickoffs so far have uh, been touchbacks, but this one will be returned by Cedric Wilson. And I'm pretty sure Mr. Wilson's wishing he'd left it alone because he stopped hard at the 17-yard line by Kincaid Finnington. Look at Tyrell Gibson, number 83. He's had two bad games in a row. He's had shoulder problems. He has not played well when he was injured, and that was part of the reason that uh, Craig got on some of the guys. He said, you got to start playing. Everybody's banged up this time of year. You think that guy's not a competitor? Yeah, he's probably over there in Tyrone's face saying, see what you can do, see what you can do. I've been telling you yeah. you can do that. Manning's having a hard time uh, changing his signal. Gives it off to Lewis, and Jamal Lewis picks up about eight yards on that carry. But that end of the Georgia Dome was full of folks from Auburn. And they're not going to give him any help. That's a good point, Keith. You look at the 50-yard line, and everything to the right side is blue and orange, and that's Auburn. And anything to the left side of this stadium is all orange of Tennessee. Ball is on the 25-yard line. It'll be second down and two. Tennessee. Manning stays in under the center. Pitches it back to Lewis. Lewis generating a cut and leverage and picks up the first down. No one down. Had to go underneath the block to get him, but he did it. Jamal Lewis is a freshman. He is from Georgia, from Atlanta area. And he's going to be a great one, I think. Just a look at the first three games before, and then the last, uh, the last eight. He has made a big difference. Look, look at the power from the waist down. He's a big guy. Oh, yeah. He's powerful. Isn't this sort of an exercise in futility sometimes, though, to go through a call and all of your signals at the line of scrimmage in a noisy place like this? Well, if you want to get the right play on against the right defense, then that's what you have to do. But you got to make sure that everybody hears it. Gain on that play is a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. Old Payton may run out of voice before the game's over. Tennessee's first possession, they took it right down and scored their last four possessions. Not done much with it. Call it second down, long seven. Manning moving a bit this time, throws, and he's got a man all by himself over there. On his knees, it's Peerless Price. Price came back that time on uh, uh, Cashier, I guess, is the man who's in there at the corner right now. He and Nolan are the corners. Just a little semi-roll and two receivers on the sideline. One short, one working up, and uh, Peyton found him about 20 yards down the field. A little semi-roll helps the pass protection. Roll the quarterback, get him outside some. And Price's catch makes it first down Tennessee at the Auburn 41-yard line with Auburn leading 20 to 7. Here's a roll by Manning and a throw down the middle. He had him, but he overthrew his tight end, Antron Peebles. Antron is a target. 
Six three two forty seven. It's like throwing the ball against looks, the wall. He looks bigger than two forty seven. I want to tell you, he's a tight end. He, uh, he's was only caught two passes this year. He was open, but Peyton had to throw it over a linebacker that was about five yards between uh, Peyton and uh, Peoples. <laughs> he just didn't have enough gas to go get it. Second and ten. 11.37 to go in the first half. 11 guys at the line, Keith. There's that look again. Stands up, throws quickly, and it is incomplete. Marcus Nash, number 12, who's double poison. He can really go when he gets a hold of the ball and gets some room. He had two people over there with him, Brad Ware and uh, Antoine Nolan. There's a look now. Look at all the defensive guys are at the line of scrimmage. What Peyton does this time, he's going to throw it out here. But watch as this guy is going to drop off and come out and help double the wide receiver. That's a different look. Brother Bill, the coordinator defensively, has given Peyton a few different looks and a few different coverages off that look. Third and ten. That pass is on the money, and it is caught by Jermaine Copeland. He caught it with his hand. And it's first down Tennessee at the 28-yard line of Auburn. You like that, don't you? The Hoss is yes, catching do. it with his hand. You know, you don't see many doing this anymore. That's nice. I like that. Well, he's a quarterback. What do you expect? An ex-quarterback out there catching passes. They don't ricochet very often if you put that kind of a pressure on it when it gets there. Big drive here now for uh, Tennessee and Manning. This is Lewis. Runs into three blue shirts on the corner and picks up a yard. What I mean by a big drive, Keith, is you know you're you're down 20 to six. I mean you come in, you score, you score first, and you think, well, you know we're going to do all right in this thing, and then and then you fumble one, and they run it back for a touchdown, and then they get a big one for a touchdown, and you know you start wondering about your uh, confidence, and you maybe lose your poise. But if you take one right back down and put it in, then you're back in the ball game. I will never forget the Washington-Denver Super Bowl when Jerry Burns turned to me after Denver scored easily early and said simply, fault secure. Yeah. Penalty flags all over the place. Before the ball was snapped, looming by the offense, five yards. Down. These little kind of mistakes like this now, they can accumulate and they can get you beat. Well, they, they, they're, just, they're bothersome. I mean, they can be overcome, but they're, but they're bothersome. Tennessee, three penalties for 20 yards. So far, Auburn, zip. Second and 14. Checks for the run for Jamal Lewis. Lewis is taken down at the 30, and one more time to KO Spikes. You want to look at one of the best linebackers in the Southeastern Conference and maybe in the nation right here, to KO Spikes. Been doing it a while. <laughs> gotcha. Yes, sir. Third and 12. Double trouble down here at the bottom of your picture now. Fearless Price is down here. Now, now he throws a three-man line at him. Instead of all 11 at the line, only three-man line. Looks like it may be a zone. He's looking for Price. He gets it. Good move by Price. Puts up two more yards, and it's first down Tennessee inside, just inside the Auburn 15. All right, this is, uh, you, may, you know, Brother Bill Oliver defensively is making him work. Three-man defensive line. The safeties are going to drop straight back into zone coverage. Peyton is going to read this at the line of scrimmage. Stop it right here. There you go. There's where he hits the receiver wide open. So ain't nothing easy about what's going on down there for Peyton tonight. Just inside the 15. And his play. Now they call it Peyton's offense. Now give him to Lewis. Much of 
the time he has uh, in his senior season called that check to the run. Rather, once uh, Jamal Lewis arrived on the scene, yeah. he was able to check. Well, to the especially, run. and David Cutcliffe was telling me about the uh, South Carolina game when South Carolina was just sitting off playing the, the pass and the run game was there. Peyton was 10, 12 times was checking from pass plays to running plays because that was what was there. It's second down and a good six. Well, it says five, but it's not six. Manning's pass to the end and it is incomplete. Fearless Price had it right between the three and the seven and I think looked away and didn't close the ball and he lost it. Well that was a check off. He recognized the coverage. He threw the ball. He got what they wanted. Just got to make the play. Bob I'm noticing a little tendencies here. Watch him as he comes to the line like he's trying to draw him offside. Peyton Manning. They don't budge. Then he checks off on the play. It's almost like he's just trying to draw him off sides first. Uh, you got to catch the ball on that one. And him back. Pressure zone. Throws to the end zone. Has a man. And it is incomplete. Marcus Nash lost the scuffle with Montavious Houston. Montavious was battling with him all the way. And number 13, uh, Nolan, is shaken up in the end zone. Houston who made a good play. There you go again. You got 11 guys up here at the line of scrimmage. Now you got three receivers out here and two over here. They're covered by backs. Everybody else is going to blitz. Down the middle. Right side down the middle. He just throws it up. At the very last minute, Houston knocks it away. Somebody's got to make a play, Keith. Some receivers got to start making plays for Tennessee. The ball's there. They just got to start catching it. got the Auburn man and it looks like it's uh, Kesher who's down on the field in the end zone so time has been taken for him for the moment and he will leave the field of play he took a pretty good lick as he came flying in there and got his piece of it but it got his bell rung. so now Tennessee will unable to get it in the end zone though certainly Manning uh, afforded them the opportunity twice he had the ball on receivers hands on the goal line or in the end zone yep. Jeff Hall into by the field goal. This will be a 27 yard try. He's 15 out of 21 this year. And he's got it. And so the volunteers finally come back to get something else on the board and they trail now 20 to 10. Seven minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Auburn 20 and Tennessee 10. Auburn storming back to score 20 unanswered points after Tennessee scored a touchdown on a 40-yard pass play in its first possession. And the orange and white half of the stadium got pretty quiet. Now they've perked up again. Auburn was assessed a 15-yard penalty after the field goal. Tennessee will kick the ball off from the 50-yard line. Larry Kasher has uh, twisted an ankle and a tender one. He's off the field for the time being. And so this ball figures to go well beyond the field of play. And there's the young man right there who has been the story of the ball game so far. Well, along we, with the Auburn defense. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. brother Bill Oliver has <laughs> been the story. Well, they've so scored. The Auburn defense has scored seven points, yeah. and they've uh, moved things around. Ball kicks it very, very high, and the ball is taken by Cooper at the three-yard line. When the ball is kicked that high. And then uh, you're going to get down and cover it, and they did. We turn now to John Saunders. Keith, it's time for the Burger King update. Scott Frost had a great day today. Seven yards on this one. He had 201 yards passing and 80 yards on the ground and a couple of touchdowns as they win the Big 12 championship. The question, though, Keith, is Scott Frost not mentioned when we talk Heisman. I wonder why. Because he's a running back. Scott Frost. <laughs> Scott Frost belonged in Nebraska. He, he, he was. Uh, he's from Nebraska. He went out to Stanford and he came back to Nebraska. That's his style of offense right there. I bet he's an all-pro safety. Yeah, right I did too. Good for Scott. First down and ten from the 15-yard line. And Craig back. Pressure coming. Sets up a screen. Fred Beasley has the ball. Two blockers in front of him. Big play for the Tigers. He's up at the 37-38 yard line before Corey Gaines brings him down. 
That's a nice call by Rodney Allison, the coordinator offensively for Auburn. Throwing some on first down, doing some things with uh, Craig, and now he says, all right, we'll let you dump it off. Bailey, the fullback, I mean, Beasley, the fullback, has uh, been a big part of this offense. Usually blocks, but uh, good receiver. First down from the 38 for the Tigers. Blitz coming. Reverse. takes courage for Craig to hang on to the ball and sit in there with all these bodies flying around. Clifton Robinson coming by on a fake reverse and Craig kept the ball and he put the ball right on Bailey's hand. Oh, he just faked it and then he just stood there with his back to the to the defense. Watch this. <laughs> takes you, nerve. You see the uh, receiver coming, he fakes it, he still got the ball. <laughs> That's pretty good stuff. Uh, and he throws this ball about 50 yards right on line. Oh, it's second down and ten. Sort of reminds me of the original Boomerowski that Osborne, Tom Osborne, pulled at Missouri one time. Out of the shotgun, there's a penalty play. How about wide open? Would you say that these two offenses have got it, <laughs> the throttle wide open, huh? I would, yes. I think you're going to get a movement call here along the offensive line. Pull them all with snap. Movement by the offense. Five yards, still second down. How many times do you reckon Jerry chews that gun per quarter? You know, we ought to, we ought to put a uh, camera on him and, and uh, count how many times he chews that in a minute. Yeah, but don't you have any shopping left to do before Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> um, It'd take you a while to count it. Oh, boy. Second down and 15. There's Raynock uh, Thompson over here, Keith. He's going to blitz. A lot of these guys are crossing in here. It mixes up the uh, blocking assignment. 46, Thompson comes free, and he meets one of his other defensive mates back there. That's the first sack for Damian today, I think, isn't it? Yes. Yep. Yes, it is. Third down and 19 now. The ball back up the 29-yard line. Play clock burns. Zero on the clock. And I think they burned it. There's a zero up there. 25-second clock expired. Yep. Five yards. Time remaining in the first half. Six minutes and three seconds. The Tennessee blitzing now starting to uh, disrupt Auburn's uh, timing and effectiveness. back on the 24-yard line and make it third down and 24 for the Tigers. Coming again. Leonard Little missed him. Penalty flag down. And now they get him as he goes back the other way. Craig is tackled back at the 16-yard line by Jonathan Brown. But let's see about the penalty flag. I think Little was offside, Keith. Might have been. He got there pretty quickly, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> At offside, defense, five-yard penalty. Still third down. They'll take five the other way. And it'll be third and 19. Keith and Bob, Damian Craig on that last tackle just got bent over. You see him limping there. He didn't even pay attention to the penalty. He knew he was hurt. He got up. He was trying to get off to the sideline, limping very badly. Watch him as he drops back. I don't know how, how strong that leg is. I think it's his right leg that he's limping on, guys. He was laying, the lineman was laying on his ankle. It crossed his knee, so we'll check it out. Well, it's Craig Yeah, there's no question that he is not 
100 percent right now. He handed the ball to Rusty Williams, and he didn't and get it. Never got it. Didn't get it to him. Nope. Now he's coming off the field. So we'll keep an eye on uh, Damian Craig. Without him, uh, I'm not sure Auburn's oh. offense has got three wheel wagon, much less four. Jared Holmes in for his second punt of the night. His first one was 46. Terry Fair being court. No pressure. That's a good kick. Runs him all the way back to the 25 yard line. Look out. Fumble. Auburn got it back. At the 30 yard line. Larry Melton knocked it loose and uh, was involved in the recovery. But again, the fumble is caused by somebody hitting him from the rear, from behind. And I believe it was Ryan Taylor. Oh, the ebb and flow is deep. A little simmering going on right there. That's Philip Fulmer, the head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers. Taylor's the man that knocked the ball loose, stripped it from uh, Terry Fair, and uh, Larry Melton recovered from, from behind. Number six, right there. Nice job, Ryan Taylor. Very aware of where he is and what he's doing. They say turnovers in big games, Keith, and we've seen a lot of them here already. Craig throws. Ball's caught by Goodson. And Goodson gets it out to the 41-yard line, close to a first down in front of Terry Fair. It was Goodson who caught that long pass for the touchdown. Money. Well, Keith, Damien Craig sprained his left ankle. That's a report from the trainer. And I don't know if this turnover came at a very opportune time because the trainer never got a chance really to work on it. They get the turnover. He's got to go back in the ball game, so he hasn't had a chance to readjust his tape job or anything, Keith. That's a good point, uh, Lenny. I was thinking, you know, you get banged up. You'd like to have some time on the sideline to see how you're doing and retape it. But the turnover, I guess you take a turnover anytime, though. They had second down and about a foot for the first down or a half a yard and uh, break the snap and uh, Auburn's going to be assessed five yards. For the snap, movement by the offense, five yards. Still second down. So it goes from second and about a half a yard to second and five and a half. Seven of 14, 181 yards. That's big time for uh, Damian Craig first half uh, numbers. Offense has scored a touchdown. The defense has scored a touchdown, and they've picked two field goals. Bailey and Goodson are together at the top of the picture. The wideouts and it inside and try to run for Rusty Williams. Not much, a couple of yards. It's kind of a rough night for Peyton Manning so far. Not his fault so much now, mind no, you. No, he's, he's, he's had put the ball where it needed to be. Oh, they, they just haven't caught it. They should have had another touchdown for sure. I think maybe the uh, Tennessee mistakes, four fumbles. They've lost two. One was returned for a touchdown. And four drop passes, one of those for a touchdown. Third down and three. Show blitz. Beanbag thrown. That means the play well, is down. He's not. He's not 100%. No. Ain't no way. No way. I mean, we talked on the opening about this guy had all the pressure on him. Check out his legs. I think it's his left, left ankle. Yeah, you just see him pick it up there. He's just not he... moving around. But this, this guy is, and he fumbles the ball, and he gets it back. But this guy generates 80, nearly 80% of the offense, throwing and running himself of that whole offense. They need him. On fourth down, they'll punt. Jared Holmes is in for his third kick, 46 and 49, and it's Terry Fair waiting for it, standing back inside his 25. A little bit of pressure there, but beauty of the punt. No fair catch. Air skips away from three down there, and uh, I think the he fumbled it. Out. Yes, Auburn's recovered it. That's five fumbles by Tennessee, and it's Kevin McLeod who covered it for Auburn. It's the second straight fumble for Fair on punt returns. 
They fumbled five times and lost it, what, three times, right? Wow. Well, you know, you talk to coaches about big games, and they'll always say turnovers are a key. And special teams, take a look right here. That's uh, no, doubt. That, no question. Who was it, Terry? McLeod, Kevin McLeod, 43. So it's first down for Auburn at the Tennessee 28-yard line. All show blitz. Break back. Can't get it worked on on that throw right. Well, has Bailey wide open. And he lost it. My goodness. Well, you got to start making plays. I mean, the ball, their opportunities are there. Nice play action, first down, nice call. Bailey's getting downfield. The ball is a little bit behind him. You got to catch that oh, pass. Oh, right you got to catch that pass. <laughs> wow. Oh, boy. Peyton says, turn around is fair play. We drop some, you guys drop some. Second down and 10. Goodson. Goodson. Goodson's caught a lot of balls in his career. He's only eight shy coming in of the all-time leader. Well, in the Alabama game, they dropped that ball a lot. And this, uh, this, this is what we mean here, Keith, about Craig, the pressure on him. They they can't run the ball, and they, it no. seems to be like they they're not even trying any longer. They lead Tennessee 20 to 10 with two minutes to play in the first half, and they've got it third down now inside the 30. Ball is thrown to Bailey, and this one uh, did not get to the receiver. So Craig uh, struggling a bit with a sprained ankle, it appears, was not able to deliver the ball there, and we'll get Jared Holmes one more time. He's two for two tonight in his field goals of 30 and 48. At least at halftime, uh, Damian Craig will have a chance to have that ankle retaped. Now let's watch this. Turner snaps, Zills holds, Holmes from 45 yards. That picture provided by the Budweiser blimp in the eye in the sky camera. Live shots a thousand feet above the Georgia Dome. It's first down Tennessee in the closing moments of the first half. Peyton Manning rolls out, rolls complete, and gets out of bounds, stopping the clock. That's Peerless Price, who's been a prime target. Nash has been pretty quiet. Nash and Copeland both. Well, Nash, uh, Nash has been quiet in a positive way. But in a negative way, he's dropped a couple of balls on the ground, and one of them was picked up and run in for a touchdown by the Auburn Tigers defense. That gain is out to the 36-yard line, where it is second down and a long two. Price has caught five balls in the first half for 90 yards and a touchdown. Here we go, 11 at the line again defensively. Hayden's checking off. That's your first down pass, out of bounds, stopping the clock. Marcus Nash made the catch. Here's John Saunders. Well, if Tennessee's going to make it to the Orange Bowl, they have some work left. We know Nebraska is there. Yeah, very strong statement made by Nebraska today. Colorado State, an impressive win. We'll have numbers and pictures at halftime. All right, we'll talk about that and more on the Babylon Halftime 97. Right now, back to Keith. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. If the score stays the same, the sky may fall. Well, you know, you know, Bobby Bowden's Bobby Bowden's got a big smile on his face right now. Here he is. Well, the state make it. They game. peel out. They were 11 up. Then they peel out, and they force him to change his call. He goes to the outlet man, Lewis, and Lewis is knocked down for a yard loss by Houston. And timeout called by Tennessee, stopping your clock at 1:29 to play in the half. The balls have two left.
All right, Tennessee plotting here now, trying to squeeze something out of the last minute and 29 seconds of what has been an uproarious first half of college football. And the startling score is Auburn 20 and Tennessee 10. I don't think it's startling at all in the perspective of the Auburn people. But for those of you out across the country who may not have seen them this year, I'm sure you're quite surprised. Second down, 11. Manning looking at all 11 up there again. They back out. Now lets it go deep down the sidelines for Nash, and it is intercepted by Larry Cashier, the freshman corner. A little longer at six. Well, I, what I don't understand is why the receiver didn't fight for the football. I'm sure that uh, this is one of the things that wanted to do against that pressure defense is, is throw deep. Now watch Nash, number 12. He doesn't even go after the football. I mean, you got to protect your quarterback and try and knock the ball loose. That's the uh, fourth turnover that the volunteers have had here in the first half, the first interception. And they're lucky they're only down by 10 points. Coverage. The Tennessee man was trying to pick it up and run to the end zone, build up instead of covering the ball and possessing it. And he never got a handle on it. And an Auburn man came along and took it right out from under him. <laughs> Duff is 6'3 and 265 pounds, and he just saw end zone. He comes up with a ball, but I don't think they're going to give it to him. Looked to me like the Auburn man pounced on it. <laughs> He's a defensive lineman. He says, This is my moment to shine. I think Damian Craig got that ball back. Damian was coming across over there, sore leg and all. The ball was definitely out. Was Watch, see if he covers it here, Tennessee's got a big chance, but he didn't. Now here comes Craig diving on it. Yeah, you're right. Look at that ankle retake. All of the breaks are going in the direction of uh, the Auburn Tigers here in the first half. He's got contact along the line of scrimmage and everybody's pointing at each other. I don't see any penalty flags. Tennessee calls, Tennessee timeout. calls timeout. 20 seconds remaining. Auburn with the ball at their own 12 yard line. And Greg seems to be walking a little better as time goes on here. He does. So the Vols are trying to pin them down and try to get something from their defense. ABC's College Football is online live. Follow the action from today's championship games all on America Online. The key word, ABC Sports. Terry Bowden telling us yesterday that he needed some help. He said, he, I, I, I don't know if my corners can cover the wide receivers. I need, I need some running game, which he has not gotten. But the thing that he has gotten, he's gotten four turnovers in the first half that have led to, they've only led to seven points. Yeah, they were down here inside the 30 a little while ago and came away with nothing. They'll just kill the clock here, Tennessee, with uh, one timeout remaining, and they'll probably spend it See, the, here. The problem there is, the problem there is Damian wasn't going down on a knee, so one of the Tennessee guys came in and pushed him down, and, and Beasley didn't like it. Well, you know, you can't have it both ways. Damian gets out of there in a hurry. If they want to have a scuffle, <laughs> he'll go on over there where it's safe. <laughs> Get away from the big old guys. <laughs> Tennessee just spent its last time out. So with 16 seconds remaining in this first half, we've got a. Sure, Phil's not real pleased with the way his uh, his troops have played the first half, Keith. But uh, you know, I think the first thing he's going to tell him is the way we've played. We're only down by 10 points. Sure, of course. You know, right? Yes. You know, absolutely. Just do away with the mistakes. They well, can very easily be down by 20. Oh, for sure. 
and there's a lot of tools that haven't been uh, used yet on that Tennessee sideline. The former wanted to make the Auburn Tigers punt the football away, and they're going to get it right here. Bear is uh, the deep man, and Terry has fumbled the last two returns. He's standing back just across uh, midfield. Jared Holmes just punt is out of there, and it's not a particularly good one, and it takes a straight-up bounce. And the better Jared Gabbitt guy is going to go the other way. <laughs> well, the, 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 the problem for Tennessee is as long as it's bouncing around, the clock's running down. That's right. So you've got three ticks remaining on the clock. That was not a particularly good punt. He got under it just a little bit, and it was a mere 37 yards. His other punts had been in the high 40s. Yeah, I'm sure that Terry said, just get the ball out of there. They tried to block <laughs> it, and he said, anything over the line of scrimmage is acceptable. This defensive alignment that uh, Bill Oliver's putting out there now, look at that. He's got four guys standing back uh, between the 20 and 25 yard line. This, this just looks like a Hail Mary right here. Yep. Well, Price and Nash and Copeland. And uh, that's illegal. Uh, yep. but too many guys in the huddle, and you run one people. off late. 12 men on the field for more than three seconds. Five yard penalty, still first down. Unintentional, I'm sure, but a good call by Al Ford, the referee. Well, Bryson got caught in the game, number 24 fullback. Some teams do that no, intentionally, and that's why they put that rule in. So make it first and 15 for the last play of the first half. Pumps it and lets it go. The scramble is on and it is incomplete. It was thrown beyond the field of play, so it would not have been good if it had been caught. Your halftime score is Auburn 20 and Tennessee 10. Now to New York, John and Todd. The SEC Championship of 1997 presented by Dr. Pepper. And it's a dandy with Auburn. The underdog leading by a score of 20 to 10 over Tennessee. Moments ago, the Auburn locker room. The head coach, Terry Bowden, holding court. All right, men, now listen now. You got about 30 minutes, of your, 30 most important minutes of your life out there, isn't it? Of your football life, you got 30 minutes to play. And we got to go out there and play our best men. I mean, off the defense is not you. Offense, we're not even playing that good yet, are we? We're not even playing that good yet. We're, we're up 10. Now let's show them our good stuff. Let's show them our, our good execution. Let's show them our big catches. It's about where we were at Georgia. We put them away. We put them away now. They, they kicked the ball to us. Great return. No penalties. And let's make a statement on that opening drive. Make a statement on the opening drive. We're going to put points on the board. But if we don't, we're going to change field position. We're going to change field position. Defense, you keep going after them. Keep going after them. Man, you're 30 minutes away now. Nobody's giving anything to us. They've got, they've got, they've got, they've got some football left in them. They're going, they're going, they're going, they've got football left in them. <laughs> he ran pretty tight. What he didn't say was the, the four turnovers that they've benefited from, two on special teams and two on regular offense, have led to seven points, uh, and they're only up by ten points. I'm sure in the other locker room they're mentioning that. I'm, I'm sure they, they are, because they could very well be down by three touchdowns. Yeah. No doubt about it. So I'm sure that Phil Fulmer and uh, his folks uh, did a good little bit of talking about that very point, that look at all the mistakes that have... Uh, crashed on us and yet we're still in the game and here we go with the second half and that'll be touched down and come out to the 20 yard line so here are the Dr. Pepper halftime stats minus seven yards rushing for Auburn that's really not a surprise but the passing yards Auburn passing for more than Tennessee is the four turnovers by the volunteers only led to seven points for Auburn there's four turnovers in the first half or as many as Tennessee has had all season in any game. So let's see now. The Tennessee defense was getting very close to changing momentum at the close of the first half. Let's see what happens. 
Carter, the freshman, is at tailback for Auburn. Devon Craig Carter. Amy and Craig's pass is incomplete off the hands of Bailey, defended by Terry Fair. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, you just saw Damian Craig on the field. Terry Bowden said his ankle is sore, but Damian Craig said he would not miss the second half for anything in the world. When I talked to Phil Fulmer, he obviously talked about the mistakes of turnovers of the first half. He said he thinks he's made the adjustments. They can pick up the blitz in the second half, but when they come to the line of scrimmage, what they're going to do is just go with some plays. Manning is not going to all of lives as much, Bob and Keith, at the line of scrimmage. I think that's a good idea. Yep. out of the shotgun and the whistle stop it before the snap of the ball. The referee is Al Ford. Before the ball is snapped, movement by the offense, five yards. Still down. Yeah. You got to watch it. You can't let little things start to uh, grab at you. And a little five yards here and five yards there, and the first thing you know, you're in a hole. Is there any question who the leader of that Auburn offense is? <laughs> Nope. Here's a look at the uh, comparison of the two quarterbacks. Both throwing for a touchdown. Baden with the one interception. Second down and 15. As Williams goes in motion and Craig steps away from the pressure and throws it hard and it is incomplete. Almost intercepted. It was off the hands of Tyrone Dillard. The ball was thrown hard. And he could not make the catch. And one of the Tennessee defenders, a linebacker, came along and almost scooped it up. Well, Damien is saying, you, you should have caught that ball. It's his tight end that uh, we talked about earlier. He caught a ball in the first half. He came into the night with only three receptions. But this ball is very catchable for most tight ends, but Auburn tight ends don't get that opportunity very often. So it's third down and 15. They run it up the middle. And there's nothing there as Beasley couldn't find anything to speak of. It's just a safe call. You're 109th in the nation in running. You're third and 15. You didn't want to turn the ball over deep in your own territory and create some momentum for the other team. Now, Jared Holmes is in the punt, and Terry Fair is back to receive it. And that's sort of been exciting tonight, particularly if you're a Tennessean. You tend to close your eyes here and see if Terry's going to handle this one and keep control of it as Holmes hits a beauty. Holmes ducked him all the way back to the 32-yard line, and Fair turns it back up the sideline. And he may be gone. Holmes, the kicker, got it. He goes all the way down to the Auburn 23-yard line. This tackle back up here at the 33, a 51-yard punt, and the return is 45. I'm sure Terry Fair is saying, give me the ball, give me another chance, give me another chance. He ran the two punts back in the first half and fumbled the football. He had good returns, but they popped out at the end of the return. This time he sets him up in great field position. Big opportunity to start the half here for Tennessee. They'll call it on the 22, and Manning's pass is completed inside the 10 to Marcus Nash. It'll be first down at the Auburn 9, tackled by Larry Catcher. Behind the defense, Peyton looks off the safety, then throws the slant. Marcus Nash, who's dropped a couple, makes a nice catch there. That ball was a little low and behind him. First and goal, give it to Lewis, stopped at the line of scrimmage. I mean, the middle of that Auburn front with the linebackers coming in, plugging the holes. They didn't move. Spikes. Another tackle. At least a piece of it. But just as Auburn got most of the breaks in the first half, Keith, coming out the second half, Tennessee got great field position. And they say, well, it's about time we got some good field position. Something good happened to us. Five wide out. McCullough is in. Copeland is in. Nash. 
A little quick pop over here to Copeland. Copeland goes down to the five yard line where he's knocked down by Jason Bray. That's a good play by Bray because he was the last hope to he's, keep him out of the he, end zone. You're right. He's out there in space with a guy that's pretty shifty. That's just, there, like you said, there were no backs in the backfield. That's just like a long handoff. Flips it out here. Now it's you're in space with a blocker out there. It's third and goal, just short of the five-yard line, and Jamal Lewis has come back in for Tennessee at tailback. Big play here. Nash goes in motion. Peyton Manning throws to the end zone, complete. Copeland for a touchdown. So Terry Bowden asked his troops to make the statement. They couldn't do it. Tennessee gets a big return from Terry Fair, and they put it in the end zone. And the extra point try. Jeff Hall and extra points can be very, very important in championship game. The kick is good. 11.56 to go in the third quarter, and it's now over 20, Tennessee 17. Yes, the Tennessee end of the stadium, that half is jumping right now. The orange and whites come alive as they trail by three. And now we'll kick off. It'll be Hall kicking. And the deep man waiting is Markeith Cooper for the Tigers. Ball hits a knuckler. That goes out of bounds. And the Auburn Tigers will get the ball up around the 35-yard line. One of the receivers comes in motion over here, but this is the man that's going to get the ball. He's going to come into the end zone with a little hook. Watches uh, Peyton's going to roll to his left and throw back inside. Finds a man inside, gets the ball there before the safety gets over there with the flow. And with that pass, Archie Manning up here will glow, and we're going to visit with him in a little while. But he watched his son pass the 11,000 yard mark. He's now 11,003. And only four quarterbacks have done that. Craig's in trouble. Almost lost the football. The pressure coming from the backside by Jonathan Brown. And so the Tennessee defense, which was aggressive and attacking at the end of the first half, comes out here doing the same thing in the third quarter. There's Brown, number 91. He came into the game third all-time in sacks at Tennessee. Damian Craig, Craig can't get up. Oh, Craig did a great job just to get this ball back. That's right. And finally pull him to his feet. And he's going to have to leave the ball game. It looked like he might have had cramps. Yeah, that's yeah he didn't see. He like. didn't seem that his ankles were bent back underneath him. That's exactly what it is, Keith. It's warm in here. You know, we've taken off our coats and, uh, and our sweaters. It's 25 or 30 degrees outside, but it's very warm inside. We talk about a coach that's really having some problems right now. It's Terry looking out. This is not the way he wanted to start the second half. You know, Bob and Keith, I sat down and looked at the numbers the quarterbacks put together for throwing the football, and Damian Craig was averaging about 33 and a half passes a game. But he had a sack every 11.9 times he dropped back to throw the football, compared to only one sack for every 39 times that Peyton Manning would drop back and throw the football. If you just look at that, you figure he's going to get sacked at least three times in tonight's ball game. The way he's running, the way he controls that offense, and he's so much of the offense, Bobby Keith. Ben Leard is in the ball game right now. He is a uh, freshman from Hartwell, Georgia. He's been in three ball games. Thrown two passes. Hands it off. And there is a considerable collision as Fred Beasley and Jonathan Brown match helmet. He had cramps. They don't last long. You can come back in. Sometimes they do come back. But thank goodness that it was only cramps and not a sprained ankle for Damian Craig. The ball is at inside the 25. It is third down and long 20.
This time Craig has time. Throws pass caught by Hicks four, but he won't have a first down. Four is knocked out at around the 38-yard line, and Auburn will have to punt the ball away. So the Tennessee side of the house roars again. Well, Auburn, two possessions coming out and two stops. They had to punt the ball both times. Tennessee's going to get good field position here again. Perry Fair goes back. Didn't have a good first half, but he started the second half with a long return. 45 yards set him up for the touchdown. The spinner down to the 20, down to the 19, the 18. Here comes Fair with the block. And another good return. He gets it back to around the 37-yard line where Brent Turner brings him down. So you've got timeout. Tennessee, good field position for this possession. Here are the two most famous football fathers I've ever known. That's Archie Manning on the left, Bob Greasy on the right. Archie, of course, the dad of Peyton, and uh, Bob, of course, the dad of Brian Greasy, the Michigan quarterback. Archie looks a little peaked right now. <laughs> yeah, but Bob's in better shape than me. Brian's not out there now. I'm dying. I know how you feel, I'm awesome. dying. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to visit with us a while. He knows what that microphone's all about. He's been <laughs> sitting in front of it for a long time. And uh, we'll go now with Jamal Lewis breaking over the left side. And I think Mo may be wearing a white shirt right now. I, I think you're right, Keith. I think uh, I think Tennessee uh, made all their mistakes they're going to make or could make uh, in the first half. Uh, Auburn got four, three turnovers, three intercept, three fumbles, one uh, interception, four turnovers, and only scored seven points out of it. I think Phil said, all right, guys, we can play a lot better football than that. Let's go out. This is our half. Second down and three at the 44. Fearless Price, the man moving toward the ball. They go back to the run. That's a first down for Lewis as he comes up to midfield. Well, both of you now, your sons are finishing their careers in college. Uh, is it a relief or has it been a joy? Oh, I've had a great time with it, Keith. I, I can't say, you know, the first half of this game, it was a joy. But uh, <laughs> when it's over, Olivia and I always say, yeah, I think that was fun. It, it's been fun because, you know, Peyton's had a, had a good time, and uh, it's been a great experience. First down for the balls at midfield. We're visiting with Archie Manning. Peyton calling the play. David Lewis. And that's a yard or so. You've got one more, though, Arch. You've got um, Eli yet to come. Well, he, he's just a pup. Kid. He's 16 years old and junior in high school, and uh, he's doing fine. But uh, we're just trying to, you know, play that down and let him enjoy the high Not school experience. One of the comments that ha uh, Peyton has consistently made was the way that you and Olivia and his brothers uh, handled this whole thing. That. Uh, you made it a joy. You did try to keep it in perspective. It, it, he's handled things well, and we didn't want it to disrupt our family, and everything's just been great. Second down and nine, Lewis. And he'll go down about the 45 yard line. I got a feeling, though, sometimes, Archie, that my partner grumbled a little when his son came along and started knocking down his records. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll tell you, mine didn't last long. <laughs> mine went by the wayside quick. That 11,000 yards, I don't think I had 11,000 yards counting practice. <laughs> well, times are changing. Yes, aren't they, they, have, they uh, throw a heck of a lot more than they used to. Thank goodness. At I least that's you. what I tell Brian. Well. <laughs> Crowd building, Auburn in trying to uh, cause trouble. Tennessee crowd on the other side of the house trying to move them on. Oakland goes in motion. And somebody moved, I think. Before the ball was snapped, ball start by the offense. Five five. It's a tough house, isn't it? It's hard oh. to hear. No, it really is a great crowd. What, it, this is a, it's a great game, a championship game, uh, you know, and of course, Florida, Alabama, Arkansas, one year done such a great job, but it's, a, it's exciting to see a couple of new exactly. teams here and the fans are into it. It's just, a, it's a great setting. The style of play wasn't real good in the first half, but <laughs> it was exciting. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Third and 10.
Quick one. Caught by Copeland. Breaks the tackle. Gets the first down. Down near the 35-yard line. Spikes brought him down to Theo Spikes. Archie, how do you feel about this, uh, about this uh, championship? Well, you know, I like the bowl system, Keith. Uh, it, talking about these championship games yeah. with the conference, I think that is really good. I tell you, the job the SEC does here in Atlanta with all the fan fests and everything that goes into it, it, it's just fantastic for the for the fans. And, of course, the kids are so excited to participate in a game like this. I think they'll remember it the rest of their lives. On first down, swing it out. Hands wide open. That's Lewis. Jamal Lewis can haul it when he gets that much room, and he's out of bounds at the 15-yard line for another Tennessee first down. Archie, I've, I've seen Peyton play. Uh, this is the first time, though. We saw him uh, uh, play on TV a lot, but I've been very impressed with uh, just how far along he is. I mean, I've said in the opening of this broadcast that I think he is the, the best quarterback to come out of college since uh, the, the group of 83 with Marino and uh, John Elway and Jim Kelly. Uh, He's so far along in all of his... Uh, his, his techniques and his principles. Well, that's a real compliment. He's had, he's had great coaching and, and Peyton's work hard. And we're, we're real proud of him. From the 15, first down. Passes away. The man's over there. It's intercepted. Intercepted. It's right off Copeland's hands. He was wide open. And it is Jason Gray still going. He's finally run down and caught inside the 20-yard line. What an incredible turnaround. Sean Bryson ran him down and caught him. It went right through the receiver's hands off his shoulder pads and was intercepted. Well, that's where being a father is not what it's cranked up to be. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. Oh, boy. Oh, my what goodness. a turnaround. Jason Bray, who was burned for the very first touchdown of the game. Uh, you got to catch these balls, Keith. I mean, at least if you don't catch it, you don't keep it up in the air and knock it to the other team. This is a huge turnaround. They're going in for a score. Now they take the ball all the way down to the 20-yard line. This is a fifth turnover for the game for Tennessee. Blitz coming and whistle. Checks your character, and then it, uh, Archie. Yeah, uh, that's where you gotta, you gotta dig deep. You know, these it's been unfortunate for some players, you know, and not really uh, some mistakes, but these aren't freshmen. We got uh, guys that have been making plays for four years out there. Think, as you know, in football, things don't always go good, but there's it's 60 minutes long. So that's right. As long as there's time play. to play, I mean, it's 20 to 17, and things have not gone well. They've turned the ball over five times, and you say, how many times are you gonna win a game? You turn it over five times, but yet they still got the chance. Well, you're, you're so right. Tennessee is so fortunate to be in the football game after all those turnovers. It's first and 15 back on the 24. Great step away from the pressure. Gets his pass away. He's got a man. It's Beasley. It's touchdown. Auburn Tigers come back. The ball ricochets off the hands and the shoulder pad of Jermaine Copeland when he looked like he would score. It goes the other way and Auburn converts it and Jared Holmes for the point. Good. 6-14 to play third quarter. Back to a 10-point lead for Auburn. I wonder how high Bobby Bowden jumped <laughs> yep. a couple of minutes ago, and I bet you Mickey Andrews had to go run around the house. <laughs> oh, Mickey. <laughs> yeah, kick by home. Boy, this fellow's got a leg. Woo. The 
let's go back now to the play that brought on this startling turnaround. Tennessee headed for the end zone a second time in the quarter, and this happened. Tennessee headed for the lead. Peyton gets the ball and gets it to the receiver in a lot of time. Copeland just doesn't catch the football and then bats it up in the air, and Bray gets it. And instead of going in and scoring seven, Auburn goes the other way and scores seven, a 14-point swing. Here's a look at Tennessee's mistakes. 14 points they've led to uh, for Auburn. Mark Levine is in the backfield now. There's a wide up, and Manning stands up and throws. And it's going to be worth about two yards as Auburn covers Fearless Price quickly. Archie, I guess this is where Peyton has got to pull down and for the character and the leadership and the, keep the poise, keep the faith, and, and transmit that to the rest of the people in the hole. Well, you've been there a lot of times, Bob, and that's what it's, that's the job of a quarterback. And uh, he's got he's got good people, and uh, these guys, a lot of guys are having a tough time tonight, but they've made plays for three or four years up there, so we'll. We'll see what it's all about. Well, they're, they're averaging, what, 35 points a game. Yeah. So they, they're, they're looking to score some more. Whistle, stop the play. Arch, it's always great to see you. Thank you, Key. Say hi to Olivia and, and the boys. And, and fun to come by. Now, don't suffer too much. Well, I'm, I'm dying with it, but uh, always <laughs> great to see you. You've been a good friend. Uh, Bob, we're, pr we're proud of Brian. Thank you. And I know how, you, how you're how you feeling right now. <laughs> okay. You know, it was kind of nice when we were doing a telecast that wasn't a Michigan game. I just go out <laughs> and have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, Archie. Thank you, Archie. Good to see you. See you in New York. Great fellow. From the 17-yard line now, Tennessee ball, second down and 13. He wears it with grace, doesn't he? Yeah, I know. He's just eating up inside, yes, though, when that, when that ball went the other way. And he fakes it, pulls it out, throws to the sideline, and passes incomplete. Covering on the play was uh, Nolan, Antoine Nolan, and the man trying to catch the ball was Marcus Nash. Nolan had good coverage on that one. These corners are, are doing a pretty nice job. Nolan on one side and Bray on the other. Well, the Auburn football team gets its personality from this fellow uh, like that, uh, Nolan, uh, and like uh, Craig and the coach, uh, Terry Bowden. He's yes. a bumptious get up and fight him. Stand on the chair if I have to. Get me so I can reach him and I'll whack him. <laughs> Whistle stop it before the snap. I think Price might have started the tad too quickly. Five yards. The third down. Well, there are times when it looks like they might lose their composure a bit here. Let me show you what they're doing there. They got all 11 up at the line of scrimmage again right here. Now, sometimes these guys all blitz, and sometimes they drop back. Now, go ahead and start it, and I'll look at them all bailing out. Now, stop it right there. They're dropping back into zones back here where they showed an area where they were going to blitz to begin with. Third and 18. And he has time. Throws. He's got a man. It's Price and he makes the catch. Up at the 35-yard line just across it. That's a big time throw and catch there. Keith, you backed up. You need a first down. He looked the safety off to the left side. Watch as Peyton's going to look to the left side when he sets up. Looks to the left. Now he comes back. So there's a nice hole there where the safety doesn't get over. He does things, Keith, that uh, a lot of college quarterbacks don't do. He's pretty far down the road as far as getting his reads and set up and techniques. From the 36, pitch it back to Jamal Lewis. Found a little daylight on the left-hand side and goes for about six yards. Monday Hugh Downs takes you on a journey. Have they discovered descendants of the Pharaohs? We'll travel with you and find out. Tales from the Tomb, Monday on ABC, and live at 9 Eastern on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. It is gut check time for the Carolina Panthers and the Dallas Cowboys if either are to make it to the playoffs. Second down and four. Jim Lewis. 45, he's a yard short of the first down. Ricky Neal and Charles Dorsey make the tackle. 
That's Jeff Dunlap shaken up on the field and down. He's going to need some attention. In fact, there's two of them. It's Dorsey also down on the field. So two Auburn Tigers are are down and require attention. That's so, two of their defensive tackles yep. that are down. And there's a look at Jimmy Brumball, who was uh, maybe their best defensive lineman. He's out with an injury. They're very thin in that line coming in, and they can't afford to lose two more on one play. It's been an all-out effort. They've spent everything they've got, and it's quite warm in here, so they're starting to have some trouble, and we'll spend a moment with John. Keith, it's time for the Burger King play of the day. Almond Green had a terrific day, so did Frost. He takes the pitch here and takes off 25 yards. For Green, 163 yards on the day and three touchdowns. So Nebraska is now headed to the Orange Bowl where they will face perhaps Tennessee if they can come back and win this one. Again, Amon Green with the Burger King play of the day. Keith. All right, thank you, John. We've still got time out here in behalf of the two injured Auburn players. All right, back we come to the Georgia Dome. 27 to 17, Auburn leading Tennessee with three minutes and 23 seconds to play in the third quarter. Tennessee ball, third down and one. And they give it to Jamal Lewis. He dives ahead and gets the first down. Nate Smith replaces Jeff Dunlap at the defensive front for Auburn. And Shannon Suttle comes in at the nose tackle, replacing Charles Dorsey. We are told they had cramps. Jamal Lewis in 97. Tennessee University. He's uh, only a freshman. There have been some high steppers up there yes, wearing sir. those colors. Staying with him. On the workhorse, that's a pickup of two yards. Tennessee testing the inside of that defensive line. Since those two defensive tackles went out on the last play. John Saunders mentioning a while ago that Amon Green had a big day for Nebraska in their win in the Big 12 uh, championship game. Curtis Enos of Penn State, Amon Green, and Ricky Williams of Texas are the three finalists in the Doak Walker uh -huh. running back award. Second down and nine. There's a look. They're all up there again. Peyton's checking off, or maybe he's faking like he's checking off. Well, they come. Gets it away. Got air under it for Copeland, and it's thrown too far. Copeland stumbled just a bit when he started running downfield, and I don't know if he had, would have been able to track it down. Well, this time they're all up there, and they're coming which means Peyton's got to get rid of the ball. Copeland's going to get free, but it takes him a little while. He gets jammed a little bit, and then the ball is thrown too far to the outside. If he could have waited a little bit more, he could have seen the angle that uh, Copeland got off and maybe got the ball to it. Third and nine. Up the middle. Didn't get it. Marcus Nash coming right across the center. Manning got him the ball, but Nash could not get free and is knocked down short of the first down. So it is fourth down and uh, a good two and a half yards, and Tennessee has taken a timeout. And we're in the third quarter with a minute and 54 seconds to play. Our Marriott moment, the first SEC championship game five years ago in Birmingham. 21-21 tie between the Florida Gators and the Alabama Crimson Tide late in the fourth quarter. As Matthews goes back and throws. Intercepted by Langham. He's on his way. Touchdown, Alabama. Bill uh, Oliver was the defensive coordinator at Alabama that ball game and now he is the defensive coordinator at Auburn I said there he is right there in the center 
said, I was at Auburn before I was at Alabama. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when uh, when he moved from Alabama down to Auburn, some of the trees lost their bark. <laughs> there was a goodly bit of conversation. <laughs> Fourth and three, and the volunteers look like they're going to go for it, and they are. Now Auburn shuffling their defensive people around. Dorsey's back at nose tackle. Almost jumped. Peyton got him in uh, in the neutral zone, put a knee down. I don't see any flags, though. I don't see any. I heard a whistle, but uh, there's one. There's I see one. one. So what are they going to call? Offsides against uh, Auburn? That'll give them a first down. Well, defense, offside, yep. five yards, first down. All right, here's some of the... the the elements that Bob was talking about, how quick he is, because he saw the penetration in the neutral zone and put a knee down. Well, let's see if he's doing it with the cadence. Yeah, he's trying to get him with cadence right there. That's a good effort. And the guy you get more than anybody is the nose tackle right in front of the ball because your your voice inflection gets him. Yeah, but if he doesn't get the snap and get a knee down, he doesn't get the offside call. That's right. And another penalty flag. Get a little ragged probably because uh, they're getting a little tired. For the ball was snap. Movement by the offense. Five yards. So Tennessee will give the five back. You know that that first down play that we did with the cadence. They jumped. They got the Dorsey to jump off sides. If he was in the NFL, they'd call him for head bob. He was really probably moving that would, head. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make it first and 15 now, and the ball comes back to the 46 on the Auburn side of the field. Minute and 17 seconds in the quarter remaining. Passes away. The pass is caught by Price. And Fearless Price will score. Sooner or later, you're going to get burned. It's 27-23 now. About to go back to a three-point ball game if this conversion is good by Jeff Hall. And it's blocked. And a chance to score two. If he can reach the end zone, it'll be worth two. It's Quentin Reese. Blocked by Dorsey. Reese grabbed it and raced downfield. And scores two for the defense. What next? There's a flag on the field, I'm told, out near midfield. And there's another Auburn man down. It may be Dorsey again who's down. So first off, let's see about the flag. He was thrown way back upfield, long distance from where the ball carrier was, Reese. They have not put the two points on the scoreboard. Personal foul against the white team during the run back. Penalty declined. Two points. Two points. 29 23. That's a new rule in college football that if you block an extra point try, you can run it back and get two points. And that takes them from 27 to 29. 29 to 3. Here's a look at the block right up the center. Right up the center. Dorsey. Quentin Reese had an escort. There was no way they were going to let anybody get through there and get a piece of him. And he canters in. Meantime, time is still out for Dorsey. I think it is down on the field. I've not been able to really confirm it. So it takes it from a four-point game yeah, it is to a six-point game. That's the difference. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown, Keith. And Brother Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator, has been using this 11, 11 guys at the line of scrimmage. This time, the linebackers are going to come, and they are going to blitz. When that happens, there's single coverage all over the field. Peyton gets enough time. The receiver beats the defensive back this time, and Price scores the touchdown. Here's a look at it from the other 
side. Throws it out in front of him. That time the receiver fights for the ball, gets it. Sometimes you're going to win on those defensive gambles, Keith, and if you do it enough against a good football team, you're going to lose some. Price is just a junior from Dayton, Ohio, so he'll be back next year. Then they block the extra point try, and Quentin Reese takes it the distance for two. But you know, you score, the, you score the points, and you feel good about it, but then when you get the extra point block, and you give two points back, that's, uh, that's a deflator. You know, Bob, you were talking about gambling and the, and the cornerback taking a risk. You know, I'm a firm believer in those kinds of situations where a defense cornerback, that's when you don't gamble. He's got no free safety. There's nobody to help him. So if he misses a ball, he knows that guy's going to get away for a touchdown. He's going to always keep that guy in front and make sure he makes a sure tackle and not go for the ball. At least tackle him. Don't let him get a big play. Charles Dorsey's had an interesting three minutes, two minutes. He left with cramps. He came back, jumped offside on a fourth and one play. Then he blocks the extra point to produce two more points for the Auburn side. And then he gets hurt and rests for six minutes in the middle of the field. <laughs> and he's getting a lot of air time, too. <laughs> This has been uh, wild and woolly, hasn't it? My goodness. I guess you could have anticipated it, really, because of the nature of the two teams. They both have a lot of offense. Their defenses are sturdy, but not uh, People have made plays. They have not made plays, too. And it's not making plays that put Tennessee in this posture of compromise. Keith, let's go back and take a look at Dorsey coming. It's, it's right up here in the middle, and he's going to come right through the center. Right between the guard center. He just pushes his way in and blocks the football, and it's a good thing that Dorsey didn't pick it up, because I don't think he could no, have made it. Never. <laughs> he would have expired right he about He did the expire. 40. <laughs> he got his cramps around the 50-yard line. That's as far as he could have gone. <laughs> Everybody's selling out. Nobody's leaving anything on, on the, in the clubhouse tonight. All right, that's for sure. First down from the 20. Whistles. I mean, somebody is all over this uh, movement on the offensive line. I mean, they've called that all night long. For the ball snap movement by the line. Five yards. Still How many first times down? have we had that call tonight? Seven. Ten? Yeah, several. Twelve. So take it back to the 15, make it first down and 15. Time remaining third quarter, 54 seconds. 29-23. Keith, I just it's Damien's turn. He gets to go out and see if he can do something. He was upset because of that motion because he had a good play action play pass on. He wanted to throw the football. He got movement on the offensive front again, and Craig is furious. He's walking around and he's yelling at one of his guys. That's going to cost him another five yards. Go to that ball foul. It's a, it's a guard. I think it's a Curry, the left guard. He's out of the game right now, and uh, Kendall uh, Simmons comes in. He almost hit him. He does, he does spank him. <laughs> That's Curry number 69. <laughs> He weighs 315 pounds, David. Be careful. Well, they give the ball to the freshman, uh, Demontre Carter. And he stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Well, they have not been able to run the football as advertised. And it's amazing how you can be in a situation that you're in without being able to run the football. I don't think they're in positive ground yet, Keith, as far as running football. I think they're still negative. But they're ahead by six points because the work their defense and their special teams have done turning the football over. We'll get one more play look, in the third quarter. Let's look at Curry, the offensive guard. The referee threw a flag here. The team had 12 men in the huddle, more than three seconds. Five-yard team. That's 15 yards and three five-yard penalties. They had it first and 10 at the 20. 
and they have had three successive five-yard penalties. And this has just eaten Craig up. You can see it in his face. I mean, he hasn't had the snap. He hasn't had an opportunity to make a play, and they've lost 15 yards. Now it's second and 25 or thereabouts. He may, he may come back with a stick in the fourth quarter. Tennessee's had nine penalties. Auburn now has had ten. Out of the end zone. Pressure's coming. Passes away. Caught. That's good to Hicks. Four. And the four heads out to the 20-yard line where this whole shenanigans started in the first place. It was Leonard Little. Little had come from, uh, he'd moved out of the middle and gone to a defensive end position, and he was blitzing. And he almost got Craig in the end zone. So we played three. We will be back after this message and the word from our ABC station. Nine twenty-three, Auburn leads Tennessee. We've got 15 minutes to play. Unless, of course, we're tied. Auburn has failed on their last nine third down conversion attempts. Third and ten for Damian Craig out of the shotgun. Now throw. Two players, one of his teammates, run together and they wave it off, and I think one of them is hurt. All the scrambling, Beasley and McLeod ran together. The ball was thrown, but uh, Beasley is the man hurt trying to make the catch as he ran into his own teammate. Well, he's just keeping this alive. There is nobody open. He gets some pressure from Little right there. Now he throws. He's going to throw it all the way back across the field. All the way back. And there were two guys there, and Beasley hurts his knee right yep. there. Beasley made the catch, and then he ran into uh, McLeod and uh, hurt himself. Yep. Goodson. Maybe Goodson was the one involved. 83? Yeah, okay. Goodson. I'm telling you what, you can write a book. Paul Grisham. <laughs> yeah. <Hey> John. <laughs> look at the total yardage. Tennessee with 360. But look at Auburn getting all of theirs through the air. And that's not uncommon. We mentioned early on that Damian Craig was responsible for nearly 80% of the offense. Auburn to punt now. Holmes is in. In the third quarter, Auburn ran nine plays. They scored nine points. Punt is out. Didn't get it. Tennessee's going to get good field position out of this. Ball's going to roll inside the 45 and dead at the 43. 37 yard punt. Only 14 29 to play, and Auburn leads by six. Damian Craig has put on quite a show tonight. Well, we highlighted the two quarterbacks at the top of the telecast. Peyton is 22 of 37, 287, three touches and two interceptions. And Damian has two touchdowns and 234 yards. And he has no running game to help him. Ball thrown out here on a quick screen to Marcus Nash. Gets a little help on a block and moves it right about the midfield. That's where they'll put it. It'll be second down and three. Dorsey. He's been in and out. Is he in, in or out? out. <laughs> he keeps making plays. He's hunkered down at nose tackle. This is Jamal Lewis. He's had a good long time to rest since he last carried the ball, and he runs for a first down at the Auburn 41-yard line. I think everybody has got to be getting a little weary now because this has been a wild one. I'll tell you what. You can package him up and I'll buy it. Oh, boy. You know, the competitiveness, the athleticism, the, the, the drive, the desire. First down on the 41 for the volunteer. They trail by six, remember, a touchdown and a point puts him ahead. Jeff Dunlap covers the ball, Manning turned and handed it 
to the running back, Jamal Lewis, and it popped right up. That's the sixth turnover for the Volunteers here this, this, this evening. Six. You've got a fourth-year senior quarterback and a true freshman running back. I don't know if they checked off, but you've got to believe that Jamal Lewis went the wrong way. So it's a break for the Tigers. Their ball, 42-yard line. Craig back looking, going deep down the middle. Double coverage on Bailey. Cannot get to the ball. If you have no running game, Keith, I like the call a heck of a lot. Wayne Goodrich, Tennessee cornerback, uh, is hurt and down on the field. He was one of the two covering on that play. The other being uh, Corey Gaines. But it's Goodrich, who's hurt, and you've got timeout at 13-11. Best seat in the house tonight is inside. Yes, inside by the heater in Bud One Airship, the aerial ambassador for the King of Beers. Inviting those pictures. Ah, yes. Second down and 10 now for Auburn. We are in the fourth quarter with 13-11 to play. Craig, pressure. They got him back at the 35. Jonathan Brown, number 91. Jonathan Brown is a senior out of Tulsa. And he's low. That's his second sack of this evening, giving him 14 on the year. Tennessee has done uh, very well sacking quarterbacks this year. In fact, they, they've sacked more quarterbacks this year than any year in volunteer history. He had protection for a moment. Yes. Then Brown's going to get him from behind right yep. there. He's lucky he didn't fumble that yep. football. Right. Craig did a nice job of holding on. <laughs> Setting up a screen. Marquise Cooper. And the Volunteers track it down and handle it. And that's going to bring up fourth down. So they'll have to punt it away. So another turnover for Auburn's defense, and nothing, nothing, nothing comes, comes out of it. Yep. One of the stories of, of, of the game has been mistakes, obviously, but Tennessee has made the bulk of them. But actually, the Volunteers were plus eight in their takeaways this year. Not tonight. Oh, boy. Holmes got this one. Got it to turn over all the way back to the 11-yard line for Terry Fair. And he runs it back. Another good return for Fair. He got it back outside to the 26-yard line before Brent Turner brought him down. First down for Tennessee at their own 27-yard line. Trailing 29-23. Manning rolls out. Gets his pass away, and it is thrown low and incomplete for Marcus Nash. Take a look at the mistakes uh, for Tennessee. Four lost fumbles, two interceptions. They've dropped five balls. Auburn has gotten 14 points off those turnovers, and they blocked the PAT and returned that for two points. So Auburn, if you look at it the other side, they, Auburn has been a very opportun opportunistic defense. They've knocked the ball loose. They've gotten 16 points other than what their offense has. Second and 10. Quick throw, pass complete. First down, down the sidelines. It's next. Have a 
73 yards, and it's the longest pass play of the season. And it ties the score. Jeff Hall here to give Tennessee the first lead it's had since the first possession of the ball game. Tennessee 30, Auburn 29. Marcus Nash, good protection. Two missed tackles, first by Bray, number four, and then by Payton. It was a tough start of the day for Nash, number 12. He dropped a couple of balls, fumbles. But play long enough. You give these receivers enough opportunities. Bob, Terry Bowden told us early on he was concerned about his corners against their wide receivers. Quarterback scars tonight, didn't he? Under the chin. Put him taped up. Here's the kickoff by Hall. It's returnable for Cooper from the six. Oh, look at this. And a knockout around. At the 48-yard line, Jeff Hall, the kicker, did it. So Markeith Cooper got a groove and used it. Special teams. This thing's going to open up right up the middle. Nice job of blocking by the Tigers. They're just going to run him out of bounds. This is, a, this is great field position. I started to say the best that Auburn's had all day, but I don't think so. 48-yard line for the Auburn Tigers, and Damian Craig has taken time out. And he's walking slowly toward the sideline for some serious conversation. 30-29, Tennessee getting the lead. The record crowd tonight is 74,896. It's a new Georgia Dome sports event record. The old SEC mark was 74-751, and the house is split 50-50. Over here, you got UT. Over here, you got AUB. <laughs> I think the, I've got a feeling there's more UT, though. <laughs> I think they crept in over on the other side of the house. I see a lot of orange. First down, the ball at the 48-yard line of Tennessee. And there are eight balls up and coming. Craig's pass is away, and there's a penalty flag. Ball is caught by Goodson. He's punished. But you're going to get another illegal. Oh, man, we've had that call. I'm sick of it. All oh, night long, we've had it. Craig is sick of it, too, Keith. Wow. Was, you know, both quarterbacks have had frustrating evenings. Craig has had to deal with all these silly penalties, and Manning has had to deal with all the drops and all the turnovers, and only one of them, were not, really, none of them were his fault. The two interceptions shouldn't have been interceptions. It's a good thing Damien's graduating. He might come give them all hearing aids for Christmas. Pass thrown perfectly completed. But it's short of the original line of scrimmage to Eric Lowe. He's still looking at uh, about 11 yards on second down. Bob and Keith Tyrone Goodson, when he walked over to the sideline, held that left arm very close to his body. Remember, he hurt himself a second degree sprain in the left shoulder. Uh, it's painful for him, but it's apparently is healed. But he took a shot on it, and he did not look real good walking to the sideline. Kate Bailey comes over here as the wideout. Second and eleven, out of the shotgun, trying to give Craig some time. Little's after him. Pass is thrown. Same 
lost. <laughs> he may want to drive by himself. Well, that's the first turnover of the night for the Auburn Tigers. Fair does a nice job. That's good, just good football right there. While you're tackling him, why not try to knock the ball loose? So it's first down Tennessee at their own 40. They lead 30 to 29. Ten minutes to play in the game. Jamal Lewis runs it up the middle and picks up five. Most outstanding college football players and coaches will be honored at the Home Depot College Football Awards, ESPN Home Depot. The awards will include outstanding player in college football, interior lineman, national quarterback, academics, athletics, kicker, coach, all involved on the ESPN Home Depot Awards for college football. It's the midfield and close to a first down. Paul Lewis should be up near 100 yards. It's probably over 90 right now. Dunlap is down for the second time in the ball game. Jeff Dunlap. Time remaining now is the Tennessee leading by one. If they stick it in the end zone, then look out. Well, time will be very, very precious. The thing, the thing that Auburn needs is another turnover. Their offense has not been productive. In the second half, they've had the ball five times, and they've uh, not done anything with it except the one time they got it on their own 19-yard line. They took one play and scored. So. Not productive, but they've got a great field goal kicker, and they're only down by one point. If they can get the ball and get in the field goal range, Terry would feel pretty good about it. Peyton Manning, 24 of 40, 367 yards. His 11,195 career passing yards makes him the SEC's all-time pass leader. He has now moved past Eric Zire, of Georgia but his team is sitting on a very fragile one point lead with 9 14 to play in one of the most unpredictable football games that we've run across this season this is the eighth time this year that uh, Manning has thrown for over 300 yards and it's been a frustrating night for him You know what? You know what? He's shown a lot of character, Keith, a lot of poise because things have not gone well for him. They've dropped balls, they've uh, tipped them, uh, everything has happened. Balls that should have been touchdowns were not caught. Both quarterbacks had very frustrating evenings here this evening, but one of them is going to come out with a championship. Right now, uh, Bobby Bowden's emotions have run up and down because if Tennessee were to lose in this ball game, as Dunlap is up and leaving the field, then Florida State would probably be on their way to play Nebraska in uh, the Orange Bowl. I suppose uh, Auburn going to a bowl, obviously, but right now Tennessee may be sitting, uh, getting close to the catbird seat anyhow, leading by one and owning the football first down at midfield. And Auburn's uh, defensive legions diminishing steadily for fatigue and injury. This is Lewis and he runs for a couple of yards. He runs into Shannon Suttle who makes the tackle. Damien Craig on the sideline just wondering how we can get some offense going. They only have one first down in the second half does the Auburn offense. Forty-nine yards, and that's all of the offense. They have no offense running the football. Second and eight. Manning runs out of bounds. He picks up about seven yards. He's running toward his own sideline, so he was fairly comfortable doing that. 
<laughs> when he went out of bounds, the clock stopped at 8 12 to play. Manning is one of the three finalists, along with Caden McNown and uh, Washington State's for Ryan Leaf, McNown of UCLA, and the Davy O'Brien Quarterback Award. Natalie, we're getting down to the final moments, uh, which all of the awards for the various positions would be passed out. The ESPN Home Depot Award program. Manning goes the other way this time, gets his pass off. It's off the hand of Copeland, and it is incomplete. He, got a lot, he gets a lot of snap on that ball with that little flicking motion. Yeah, he, he does, throws it that and, way. and he gets it there quickly. You know, he's got a quick release. He's a student of the game. He studies it a lot. But they've got to punt it away on fourth down now, oh, leading by one point. He kind of short arm that. He just kind of shoveled it, shoved it through there, and it was a little high. This will be the first punt of this half for Tennessee. We had a block punt yet? Not yet. <laughs> Chris Holt. That's a good kick. It forces Cooper into a fair catch call at the 11 yard line. He hit it straight up. And once again, the Tennessee punters figure in it the kicking game. It's important. Uh, Terry Bowden had an interesting little story about a telephone call from his dad. And this was what his dad offered him in the way of advice before this game. He said, get your kicking game so tough. A championship game, you'll it'll all go back to the very first season. It'll go back to the kicking game, and you and you you tend to neglect it. You say we've been kicking all year, but you watch. It'll be a field goal, a block extra point, a mishandled uh, uh, um, punter field goal. And when the guy's been coaching since '55, calls me and says, "Hey, forget all the fancy stuff. Make sure your kicking game is sewed up." It was a worthwhile call. Pass is deflected by Jonathan Brown who reached up and slapped to the side and we've had uh, we've had the two bad punts one on each side we've had the blocked extra point yes we have and we've had several uh, long returns on the punting yep. game and yep. on the kickoffs and you've still got two strong legged kickers out there where a three pointer could still decide this ball we're a one point game right now eight minutes to go Jonathan Brown having a nice game Keith. a couple sacks uh, batted that ball down Second and ten for Craig. He's got some green in front of him, and he's got a first down. Goes to the marker. Passes. Yeah, his ankle's all right. <laughs> Al Wilson, who's also playing on a sore ankle, linebacker for Tennessee, was the man pursuing him. Take a look from behind the quarterback. But he's open and he gets a little bit, a uh, little bit jumpy, wants to take off. All of the offense for the Auburn Tigers tonight has been generated by Damian Craig. From the 23. Craig dumps it off to his uh, tight end, Kevin McLeod, who's a former fullback, and McLeod rumbles along for a first down out to about the 36-yard line. Leonard Little was uh, in Craig's uh, hip pocket. It's only the second first down in the second half for Auburn. Leonard Little is blazing fast. He comes in at about 247 pounds. When uh, the heavy breathing gets in the neighborhood and the ground starts shaking, it's time to get rid of that football. 36 yard line. Blitz. Passes away down the middle. Bailey. That's a very good defensive play by Terry Fair. He just simply took his arm and stripped him. That's a good point you made, Keith. You know, one thing that we have not seen a lot of tonight is pass interference. I don't think we've seen one, and I don't think there should have been one. This is a very good play right here. Seen a lot of illegal procedures at the offensive line, but uh, good defensive play. Second and ten.
too high. Yeah. Intended for Bailey, and he couldn't go quite that high. Karsten is only six feet high. College basketball and golf tomorrow. Live at 1.30 Eastern on ABC Sports. Kansas Jayhawks and the Maryland Terrapins. Season premiere of Payne Weber College Basketball. Then at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, 1 Pacific. The stars of the PGA and LPGA Tours teaming up for the final round of the J.C. Penney Classic. It's third and ten. Bailey can't do it. Got a hand on it, but couldn't control it. Looks to me like he could have caught that, could he? I don't know. Didn't. Bailey, unfair. Seen a lot of that tonight, haven't we? Yeah. Fourth down, and Holmes is in for his ninth punt. Copeland's back waiting for this one. Jermaine Copeland, number six. A wide receiver with good speed. And once again, there's a Tennessee return. 39-yard punt, 14-yard return. Look at this. This is the USA Today ESPN coaches poll. And look how close Tennessee and Florida State are in the poll. Florida State is three points behind Tennessee. Florida State season's over. Nebraska's a lock for second. They made their statement earlier today. And the other poll, the media poll, Tennessee is 40 points ahead of Florida State. Meaning the next vote, something might happen. There's a pass deep downfield intended for Copeland, and that is a very good play by Martavius Houston. He got just enough of it to keep the ball away from the receiver. But what it means, Keith, that they're, if they're split, if Florida State moves past them in the coaches poll but not in the media poll, then it's up to the Orange Bowl committee if Tennessee goes ahead and wins this ball game to pick who they want. They pick Tennessee or they can pick Florida State. Seems to the, the storyline on things these days seems to be who brings the most people. Second down and ten. This is Jamal Lewis. And he's taken down just about the line of scrimmage. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Heavy awarding over six and a half million dollars across 27 years to the scholarship funds of our colleges and universities. I don't even think I'm going to read the paper going home tomorrow. I'm just going to wait till we get home and wait till Monday. Then I can just find out for sure who's going where. Wait long enough, everything will just fall <laughs> into place. <laughs> you don't have to worry yourself about a just thing. Go play golf and forget it. There you go. Or go fill sandbags uh, in the case of going to California. Third down and ten. This is Lewis again. And he's up to the 45-yard line. So it'll be... It'll be fourth down and a good four, five yards to go. So Tennessee's going to have to punt it again. This will be the fifth punt of the night for Chris Hogg. Tennessee playing it very close to the vest. They're up by one point, but more importantly than that, Auburn offensively has not done anything nope. in the second half. Five minutes, roughly. Five and 5.05 to play. Special teams. Oaks kicks, one upfield. No fair catch by Cooper, and he gets some return on it, gets it back to about the 29-yard line, and there Mr. Craig and company comes on. Tuesday night, the 90-minute NYPD Blue. You don't want to miss the most frustrating case ever, NYPD, at a special time, 9.30, 8.30 Central, after Grace Under Fire, Soul Man, and Home Improvement. Tuesday on ABC. Yeah, I have to catch up with my NYPD Blue. They left me hanging a couple weeks ago. 
My man Sipowicz, I gotta find out what's going on. <laughs> From the 29, first down. This is the sound that he caught. He did not catch it. The ball bounced as he reached down for it. Oh my goodness. So it's a one-legged offense is what it is. It's just, we, have, we have no running game. And all we have is Damian Craig and his arm and his legs. And his head. And his head and his competitiveness. And his heart. And his heart. You got that right. Second and ten. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Uh -huh. now, Leonard Little is the man that hit him, and they're going to flag him for intentional grounding the ball. As he was going down, he tried to throw the ball upfield, but in the judgment of Al Ford, the referee, it it was too late, and they call him for grounding. Intentional grounding against the offense. Five yards from the spot of the pass. Plus long for now. Third down. There he is, working around. Leonard Little right there, number one, is going to come around and finally get him. Damien is just doesn't want to give up on this, and he doesn't want to take the sack. Just trying to complete it there at the very end. His knee was really down, Keith, before the ball came yep. out. Yes, it was. That could have been called down. I thought it was over. All continuing motion. Third down now. What a hurry. And we got him. It's Little again. Leonard Little. Gang can't do it all by himself. Nope. He's tired now. It'll be the tenth punt of the night for Jared Holmes. As he comes on the field, you see Little disposing of that last play. It's Terry Fair waiting at midfield. Back to the 40. 11-yard return. And time remaining, 3 minutes and 43 seconds. Leonard Little's up there with some pretty good guys. Reggie White is the all-time sack leader at Tennessee. Little's got 27 and Jonathan Brown, 25. Both those guys, Little and Brown, obviously, on this team, they really, they really get after the quarterback. And this one's not an easy one to get. <laughs> they got him four times a day. They'll call this the 39-yard line. Give it to Jamal Lewis. He runs into the stack for two yards. Time now becoming precious. The lead, however, is still only one point. So all you need is a, is a small miracle. Get Auburn down the field and call Jared Hall. That's what they did against Alabama. This could be a win for Tennessee, but maybe a loss because they didn't win big enough or, or, be. or good enough. It'd be. Because if there's if, if Tennessee is ranked third in one poll and Florida State is ranked third in another poll. Quick pass over to Nash. That play worked for a touchdown a little while ago. The one that put Tennessee in the lead at 30. If uh, the, the Orange Bowl has a right to invite either third team that they want to play Nebraska, and if Michigan should have should stumble in the Rose Bowl, then the Orange Bowl on January 2nd would have uh, Nebraska versus either Florida State or Tennessee here for the winner for the championship. Jamal Lewis, incidentally, has 27 carries and 103 yards tonight. It is third down and two. This could be the play right here that determines the outcome. They give it to Lewis. Keo Spikes hits him right at the 30 
How much of a surge was there? Well, you you got to go for it on fourth down anyway, Keith. I would think so. I mean, obviously, you do. It lays well beyond. Uh, You're not going to kick a field no, goal. I'm not going to try a field goal here. The ball is right on the 30. And uh, Auburn calls a timeout. So they are definitely almost a full yard short of the first down. And the Tigers want time to have a drink of water and take a deep breath and hunker down desperately. The context and how they portray this game for the future uh, will be interesting to see how it's continued. Will it be called uh, one of the great wildly exciting games or will it be <laughs> called uh, uh, a game of mistakes that eventually uh, fell to one side or the other? Well, I'm sure those who forget how it got to where it is right now will say geez it must have been a great game yep. 30 to 29 that was a great game well sort of but exciting no question about that well Peyton said all he wanted to get was a SEC championship trophy Keith yep. but, but the thing that, that, that I wonder about is how, how many times have I seen a team win a football game with six turnovers? Yeah, that's that's exactly right. All the stuff they had to overcome. Yeah. It's fourth and one, and they go quarterback sneak. And the mark is all important. I'm not even going to try to guess in the, under that melee. Auburn is saying it's our ball. Tennessee is saying it's our ball. <laughs> Al Ford ain't saying nothing. He has an uh, old friend over there on the sidelines called Chain, and it's coming in. Terry says it's going to be that much. One way or the other, it's going to be that much. Close. They may not have it. Yes, they do. By uh, half the ball. Oh, they got four more snaps, and it's 2.01 to play, and Auburn has only one timeout remaining. Damian Craig walking away. I'll tell you one thing. That young man left, spent everything he brought. He has my admiration. Oh, oh mine too. How about Peyton? You think, uh, what do you think about these, uh, all this Heisman business? I refuse to discuss it. <laughs> talked about this all year long Hoss. Huh? we haven't talked about this all year long oh I think uh, the performance tonight what few ballots there might remain out uh, some people would say well yeah you know I would, they were, I, if they were waffling on it it might influence them I, I think this yeah go ahead but your points were well taken tonight he's done what he was supposed to do but uh, he, he can't cat throw it and catch it both that's right it's been a very frustrating night and it's been a very tough night character wise I think Bringing his team back. I mean, I'm I'm all for I'm all for giving the, that trophy sometime, somewhere, someday to a defensive player because I don't think it should be an offensive player. Then I, I will get into your conversation. Yes, I know, <laughs> I know you will because I know who I know who you voted for. But I think I think if this young man right here goes through four years of school, being the model citizen that he has been, coming back when he could have gone and taken the money graduating in three years and doing everything right if we look back and say he didn't get that award I think something's wrong and I'm all for Charles Woodson I'm all for defensive players but I'm more for this guy than I am for anybody else well I hope your mailman re remembers <laughs> to go to your house and not home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> over the right side and it's about three yards short of the first down. How do you feel about it? I know how you feel. Let me, let me hear you. Monty, how do you feel? No, no, well, no. no. <laughs> Come on now. Well, well, let me tell you, if, if I had it my way, the, the, the balloting would have been done at the end of November. Not every school has an opportunity to play for a, a championship game at the end of the year. I agree. Uh, in terms of my vote, 
Uh, I would not take the SEC championship and punish Peyton Manning if he played a bad game here tonight I or agree. reward him if he played a good game. Yeah, he I gets agree. an extra opportunity that other people don't have. I think I think Charles Woodson had a great year. I mean, I think he was super. And I know... I'll tell you what I think. I think that Peyton Manning got what he came for. He got what he stayed the fourth year for. He got his first SEC championship. The one thing that he didn't get, and the one thing that Leonard didn't get, they didn't be close. The clock is rolling now. Auburn can't stop the clock with a timeout. The party's on for the Tennessee Volunteers as they defeat a game courageous Auburn football team by a score of 30 to 29. For both teams, their first SEC championship game, and uh, they provided some excitement. How many times do you turn the ball over six times and still come out a winner? I've never heard of it, especially in a championship game. yourself you'll be hearing Rocky Top all night long. Here's Lynn Swan. Thank you very much, Keith. Peyton, you stayed for an SEC championship. You deserve the moment to tell us how you feel. Oh, I can't describe it. It's unbelievable. Our fourth year, we worked so hard to get here. We got here. We kept it close all night, but we kept believing and kept the faith. And we won the SEC tonight, Lynn. There were a lot of mistakes in the first half. I saw you standing in the hallway for the second half. Very pensive, very quiet. Ten points down. What was going through your mind? Well, we had to keep our poise. We were stopping ourselves. Auburn really didn't stop us all night. We had to take care of the football, quit putting it on the ground, and finally make some plays in the second half. We did that, and our defense came up really big. When you, when you came out in that first half and you saw 11 guys lined up in the line of scrimmage, you're looking for somebody, you say to yourself, this is going to be a long night, something's a little different here? Well, we knew they were going to go to the pressure package, and they brought a lot of guys, and they're going to make some plays, and they're going to give up some plays also. They have a big one to Paris and a big one to Marcus, and we made the plays and got some points. Everybody happy at Tennessee. You won the SEC championship. You honored your commitment to Tennessee. You've got your degree. Congratulations. Thanks a lot, Larry. It's, it's a great feeling. I love Tennessee, and... Uh, Oh, SEC champs. It sounds good, doesn't it? It does. What's up, Cut? What's up, E? Oh, Archie and Olivia will sleep well tonight. <laughs> yeah. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Peyton Manning for Tennessee, Damian Craig for Auburn. They have all kinds of numbers, but the important thing is they were truly the MVPs. Chevrolet continuing to donate money to the general scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Well, we hope you enjoyed it. Good night from Atlanta. Here's John Sunday.